It's the dash to the finish of the 2024 UCI Track Nations Cup season. What started in Australia two months ago and continued in Hong Kong last month finishes today in Milton, Ontario. But what ends today is just the beginning of more stories and championship adventures to come. Paris awaits, but still one final day for track action here in Southern Ontario. Hi everybody, Gavin Day here, delighted to be bringing you the call of the final day of action of this TSO UCI Track Nations Cup season. Here's a look outside the Matabi Velodrome. It is another lovely day in Southern Ontario, sunny and warm, of course, indoors. We can't really think about that. Some of the riders after the morning session were outside stunning themselves a little bit, but now it's all down to business. And if you watched yesterday's session, take essentially take that schedule and flip it. Lots to come, the women's Omnium, the men's Sprint, the women's Kieran, the men's Madison. Buckle up, because here we go. And we are just already a few minutes away from getting the action underway. And there is a look at the program for today, starting off with the women's scratch race, the first of four events in the women's Omnium. As I mentioned, men's sprint, women's Kieran, men's Madison. And so the bookend is the Omnium though. It starts with the, or with the scratch race and ends with the points race. And in between, there's the tempo and the elimination. And of course, we will get into detail on the ins and outs of those events as they unfold. But without further ado, we are announcing some of the riders. The Canadian Maggie Coles Lister, who qualified this morning, getting a nice ovation from the fans here. 24 riders qualified. They already had a points race this morning. There were two points races to determine the field. This one is a pretty stacked field. The world champion, Jennifer Valente is there. The great Katie Archibald also here. There's a look at our elimination runner up from a few nights ago. And the whistle goes and we are underway, just about underway. There will be the form up lap, the gun will go and that Italian rider we just showed you was Letizia Paternoster. She crossed the line first, but she was relegated in the sprint and had to settle for second in that elimination race. And so everybody getting in the right spot. And there is the gun and the race is underway. 30 laps and the scratch race is about as straightforward as it comes. Just get to the finish line first no need to worry about sp sprints for points, any of that. It's just get to the line first. And yesterday, in the men's scratch race, it was a rider from Columbia who perhaps surprised the field, jumped up, made a lap, and then amid all the infighting the rest of the race, nobody else was able to make that lap up. And so he jumped out to an early advantage by just getting that lap and sitting on the back of the field. We'll see how this race unfolds whether anyone will try to launch a big attack or they'll just wait and see if this one becomes a sprint to the finish. Of course, so many variables at play in this race. You have to gauge your effort. You can't burn all your matches here in the early going. Because they still have three more races to come. Here's a look at Clara Capone of France from Aix-en-Provence, 25-year-old, riding it for Lidl Trek on the road. A lot of these riders also have road careers as well. At the front is the rider from Denmark leading the way. That is Emily de Dierksen and the distinctive European Championship bands or the European Championship jersey. That's Anita Stenberg bronze medal in the elimination a couple nights ago. Always exciting to watch her, particularly in that elimination where she likes that thrill of the danger, it seems, flirting with elimination before getting herself up and avoiding elimination just about every time, it felt like. Micah Vanderdoen, the young Dutch cyclist. She's 22 years old. So, 
A lot of riders will not be fans of riding at the front. There's Leyland Tutenberg, her brother. We'll see in the Madison later today, or he at least did the qualifier for Germany. Tim Torn Tutenberg. So, not quite a barnstorming open to this one. Nobody really keen to launch an attack. Everybody just kind of making a pull and then pulling off. Tsuyaka so Uchino, Japanese rider, riding for one of the trade teams here. So she's not wearing the, the Japanese kit. Uchino rides for the Rakuten K Dreams side, but combined Japanese cyclists have been one of the best teams in the Nations Cup standings this year, and so. As Olympic selection comes, they're going to have some difficult choices to make. There is the rider in the Rising Sun jersey. That's Mizuki Ikeda. Still nobody really throwing caution to the wind just yet. It is strung out, so it's not a slow pace by any stretch of the imagination. When the riders are all single file like that, not bunched up. There's, there's a little bit of hustle going in there, but nobody really wanting to launch things. And we're already 19 laps to go, and it's Archibald on the front. Now there's a little bit of spice in this one. Lena Hernandez of Colombia pulling off, and now Archibald goes. Now she's pushing it. This is the challenge to the field. Who can stick with Katie Archibald? It's Maggie Coles Lister, the Canadian, who responded immediately. She recognized that that's a wheel she wanted to follow. And as Archibald pulls off, she has opened up a gap. And so there are six riders there with an opening. And it's just brunt force power from Katie Archibald that shed a bunch of riders. And now those, the remaining field chasing, will have to expend a pretty fair amount of energy just to close things up. So even if it gets caught, it's a nice bit of work to perhaps expose who might not be with good legs today or who might be feeling well. And so it does reform. And there's a lot you can perhaps take and assess from that first little move. And Stenberg now, a very quick pulse. Pardon me, that's Jennifer Valente, the world champion. Stenberg right behind her, the European champion. And now it's a lot of looking around at the front. And so this is what it looks like when there's not a lot of push going into it. There's a lot of looking around, riders up at all parts of the track, up at the top, on the bottom, and Archibald not this time. She's not going to try to see who can come with her again. She did a very quick pull. And riders, as they come up to see 12 laps to go. This is a seven and a half kilometer race. And you can see by the graphic, 3K to go. And now it's it's the detente who's going to go to the front, and it is Mike Vanderdoon. Very briefly, for the rider from Czechia, 23-year-old Petra Sevchkova, 19th in the Omnium last year, was Sevchkova here in Milton, 18th at the World Championships in Glasgow. But a chance in the scratch race if someone picks up a surprise result or one that they maybe didn't anticipate, perhaps builds them up for the, the later races and they get those high points early on and set them on course for a solid performance. Down to 10 laps now, and it looks more and more like it is going to be a sprint to the finish. Nobody really wanting to risk something just yet because if you expend so much energy launching an attack and you're caught inside the final few laps, Odds are you don't have anything left in the legs to contest a sprint. And so as we get closer, it will take a brave soul to launch an attack as Valente quickly moves aside. And it's Teutenberg on the bottom. 
very quickly pulling aside. And now it's the jockeying for position. Who gets in the right spot to launch that sprint? And it is Daniela Campos of Portugal. Joseph, who just snuck in with one of the last qualifying positions this morning. I think it was three riders from each of the points race that they scratched off. The bottom three not advancing to this Omnium. And nobody wants to be at the front right now. Everybody wants to be the prowler. Nobody wants to be the prey at this point. Inside. Five laps to go now, and you really see the tempo ratcheting up. Everybody trying to find the perfect position to launch a sprint. Coming around the outside, it's Stenberg. The only entrant from Norway here in Milton. She picked up a, a bronze medal, as I mentioned, in the elimination. It is Uchino from Rakuten K-Dreams with her. Now is this a bit of an attack? The rider from China, Liu Jiali, upping the tempo. Two to go. It is going to come down to a sprint. Valente trying to get around the outside of Archibald. Clara Caponi also there. Micah Vanderdoon also moving around the outside. All the big names you expect to see are in their positions. We come up to the bell. It's Katie Archibald leading things out. Valente. And Letizia Paternos to right with her. Clara Caponi also there's Archibald leading it out. So much power in those legs as we've seen over the years. It's Katie Archibald. Is anybody able to match her? Absolutely not. It's Katie Archibald taking the scratch race. Letizia Paternos second, Clara Caponi third. And the hometown, the home nation cheering on. Maggie Coles Lister picking up a fourth place. Just under nine minutes to do, seven and a half K. And as we've seen and said so many times before, Katie Archibald doing Katie Archibald things, winning races. Sort of a tongue in cheek reference yesterday when they won the Madison ask how the race went for her and she goes well I'm down here talking to you so I guess it went pretty well and just valiant effort from Paternoster trying to get there but there's just no matching Katie Archibald she turned 30 in March looking to add to her extensive resume in a few months time and of course today there's an omnium to win <laughs> and as the endurance cyclists go off on the far side a couple doing an extra more lap down on the blue paint there. A look at our winner of the scratch race. Might she be down for a third gold medal this weekend? Still three races still to come, but first blood to Katie Archibald of Great Britain. change completely different thing now but we'll go through the standings first Archibald 40 points Letizia Paternoster 38 Clara Caponi 36 the top three Jennifer Valente the United States world champion down there in sixth but as we saw yesterday in the men's omnium a whole lot of change happens over the course of four long endurance events now picking up the pace here it's time for some major, major horsepower. And look at what we have for you in semifinal number one. Harry Lavreisen 
world champion in the sprint against Nicholas Paul of Trinidad and Tobago. This is a rematch of the gold medal races in Glasgow at the World Championships. Nicholas Paul, of course, the defending champion here in Milton as well. Paul has found some success on this track. Best two of three. And it is time for the strong men to have their moment. Bryson. A regular atop the podium. The 27 year old from the North Brabant province of the Netherlands, close to Belgium. Just almost unbeatable these days. 13 world championships to his name, including five in a row in the individual sprint. He's just writing almost an era of the record books. It's just called in. And sprinting could be called Harry Levreisen. It's Levreisen out in front. Paul, there's a fair gap there right now as they come up to two laps to go. Paul is the world record holder in the flying 200 meters, which is used as a qualifier for this 9.1 seconds. Members of his staff have t shirts that say 9.1 on the back. It is Paul pushing Lavreisen. They are just about shoulder to shoulder as they come around the line. It's Paul going around the outside. Lavreisen matching him a little bit. He has that inside line. He has that sprinter's lane. It's Lavreisen bringing it to the line, and it's 1 0. Harry Lavreisen. Two absolute strong men, shoulder to shoulder. And Sprinter's lane, you see the advantage of that inside line it is the world champion. Who was up one nothing on the vice world champion. But don't count out Nicholas Paul. Just an absolute force. Paul sitting up a little bit near the end, realizing it wasn't going to happen on this one. And so they'll switch those positions, and we'll see what the sprinter's lane can do for Nicholas Paul in the next race. Heat number two, it's a contrast. Big, big, tall Mikhail Yakovlev. It's over two meters tall against the compact power of Jair Chan and Fa, the 30 year old from Paramaribo, Suriname. And as of November last year, Yakovlev, who is Russian born, has competed for Russia. Yakovlev has been cleared to ride for Israel in this summer's Olympics. There he is, just 23 years old. mountain of a man on a bike. And Jair Chan and Fa, he was fourth in the Kirin in Tokyo in 2021, agonizingly close and just sort of going back into Suriname Olympic history. And of course, if you don't know Suriname, it's a little country in northern, northern South America. Well, Suriname has only ever had one man, one person winning Olympic medals. It was a medal in the 1988 Olympics, gold in the 100 meter men's butterfly, Anthony Nesti. He went on to win bronze in the same event in Barcelona. So, if a man like Jair John and Fa can come home with an Olympic medal from Paris, I mean, that's the stuff that make national heroes. And it's 
John and Fa going in front, weaving up and down the track. John and Fa opening it up, lap and a half to go, getting up to speed. Quite the long sprint here. They will get the bell and they are off. Jay or Chon and Font does have that inside line. Mikhail Yakovlev roll closing right up into that slipstream. It's not closing as fast as you might think. Jay or Chon and Font holding him off. And it looks like he will take race number one. And the man from Suriname. You see the nodding of the head. Happy with how those tactics play out. And Yakovlev will quickly go back to the drawing board and see what he can come up with for race number two, see if he can force the decider. Yakovlev just unable to close that gap. And 1-0 to Suriname, as you saw in that replay. One of the faster qualifying times, so he is certainly feeling a rich vein of form. And if you look out on the track right there, you do see our Derny, and that means one thing. It is Kieran time. I'm in qualified this morning. This is the second round. Start list, Lorian Genet of Canada, Wang Lijuan of China, Martha Bayona of Colombia. Taki Marie Divine Kwame of France and Miriam Vecce of Italy and Hedy Vandewau in the first round this morning. Vandewau did beat Genet to get the automatic spot here in round two. Genet had to go through the repechage. And Martha Bayona of Colombia is back out here in the team sprint on Friday. In the semifinals in the first round. There was an injury to the Colombians and I believe I identified Martha Bayona. It was not her. It was one of her teammates who actually picked up an injury. So Bayona is healthy and she's here in the Kieran. That is Miriam Vecce. Name we often see in the Champions League is Martha Bayona. She was the runner-up in the sprint here last year. Losing to Kelsey Mitchell, the Canadian, who has also qualified here in the Kieran. Bayona also a silver medal here in the Kieran last year as well. The riders are lined up. The Durney's coming around the corner. There is Kwame. Her family originally from the Ivory Coast. She's now, she's from just in the outskirts of Paris. And so, as always, the reminder, three laps behind the Derny. The first one, the riders stay in their positions that they were on the line, one through six. After three laps, the Derny, which has been, which gains speed as it goes around, will pull off. And then it's three laps of sprinting, and so, Unlike the individual sprint, this is really an endurance sprint. Different way to gauge your power, gauge your exertion. Different kind of sprinter. And so, Genet is a bronze medalist from the Olympics in Tokyo. Van de Waal in the Oranya kit right behind her. Bronze in the Kieran at the European Championships earlier this year. She was also on the victorious team sprint side for the Netherlands on Friday night. And the Derny's off and release the Hounds and it is Kwame going right now. And she is opening it up maybe a little early. She's looking behind, not full on exertion just yet, not quite dropping the hammer. She just wanted to be in front, wants to look over her shoulder. Here comes Bayona. Here comes Van der Wau, top three, remember, moving on to the final. The rest will race for seventh through twelfth. It is Bayona at the bell leading the way. Hedy Van der Wau, second wheel. And Miriam Vecce of Italy there around the outside. Here 
comes Lorian Genet of Canada. The Olympic bronze medalist in a not too bad position. It's going to be close to the line, and it is Vandewau and Bayona and Genet, one, two, and three, who looking like they will advance to the final. Genet leaving it late, going around to Wang Li Juan right at the end, but pretty clearly there. Going to need a photo for the qualifiers really just for who finishes in second, and it was Bayona leading it out, as you can see. And Hedy Vandewau going with her, and this is round turn four. Wang Li Juan kind of boxed in, didn't have anywhere to go, and Genet able to jump around the outside, pick up second place. And there's one Canadian in the final, her teammate and good friend, Kelsey Mitchell hopes to join her as well. She's in the next race. This race is another pretty loaded field. All kinds of talent. Confirmation of those results. Hedy Van de Waal, Martha Bayona, and Lorianne Genet, who we'll see later on in that one to six final. There are the six riders all ready to get onto the track. And there is a look at Mathilde Gros, yesterday's individual sprint winner. Start list, Kelsey Mitchell, defending Olympic sprint champion, Mathilde Gros, Alessa Katrina Propster of Germany. The defending champion from here last year. Nurul Iza Izati Mod Asri of Malaysia, Steffi Vanderpeet of the Netherlands, and the world champion, Aless Andrews. <laughs> Potential for a couple Dutch riders, a couple Canadian riders to go. There is Kelsey Mitchell. Knocked out very early on yesterday in the sprint. It was in, she qualified with the fourth fastest time, or one of the top four fastest times, actually. Might have been second. And knocked out in the 1-8 final. Mitchell, potentially, she noted on social media, maybe her last time competing at home. Which tends to indicate that she might be reassessing her future after these Olympics coming up in Paris. Derny Roman around. Second heat. The women's Kieran second round is underway. And it's Aless Andrews, the world champion here first position. She picked up silver to go yesterday in the women's sprint. And so already Bayona was silver last year in the world championships as well. And so one of the world championship podium earners has advanced to the final. Now they're free to roam a little bit so long as they just uh, stay behind the Derny. They can move up if they want to, but everyone seemingly happy to stay where they are for the moment. But the game's afoot. As now they start to look around. Vanderpate takes a look over her shoulder. She knows. They're being stalked. Les Andrews now. There's a bit of a gap opening up. Vanderpate letting it go a little bit. And might Andrews just throw caution to the wind? No, nope, she's still looking. She's still looking. Nobody's launched just yet. Klo looks over. And there's been no movement. Everybody's still one through six as they were. Now Klo opening it up. That is a very early launch. Mitchell getting right into the slipstream of Vanderpate. Now she tries to go around the outside, lap and a half to go. It's Glow, it's Andrews, and it's Mitchell at the moment. Vanderpate really on the inside there. She might be boxed in a little bit. It's very close quarters, all six riders. It is still Glow. It is still Aless Andrews. Andrews trying to come over the shoulder, going around the outside. And they are down to the stretch. It is Mathieu Glow, Vanderpate, and Aless Andrews. One, two, and three. Don't think we have need for a photo. So Glow going for the sprint double. 
here in Milton. Taking this one. And Steffi Vanderpate really on the inside there. Good achievement, good race for her to get up and get into that qualifying position, finishing in second. And so, both the world champion and the silver medal winner from last year's Worlds are going to be in the final. We'll see them come back in just a little bit. And we now see our sprinters, the men's sprinters, coming back out. There's the replay. Glo taking control of the race. And as we saw yesterday, it is very tough to beat the Watts that she can put up. And once she is in the front, that's just about all she wrote. No photo needed to decide any of the spots, though. All pretty clear. And confirmation, Glo, Vanderpate, and Andrews. Moving on, Mitchell, Propster, and Maud Osri will do the 7th to 12th race. And your qualifiers. Two from the Netherlands, one from France, one from Colombia, one from Canada, and one from New Zealand. We return to the men's sprint heat. Race number two, Lavreisen and Paul. It is Lavreisen up one. And he just owned that rainbow jersey the last few years. It was Paul, the Commonwealth Games gold medal winner for 2022 in Birmingham. And the Kieran won silver in the sprint. The Kieran gold medal ended a 52-year drought in cycling for Trinidad and Tobago at the Commonwealth Games. Paul is also a two-time Pan Am Games gold medalist. So the rematch of the gold medal race from Glasgow in race number two. Bryson must be confident, however the race may go. He knows that beating him really takes some doing. He almost kind of feels aw shucks when talking about the race, like it's no old thing, but Bryson, what a talent. And Nicholas Paul, how many times has he been in this position? How can I beat this man from the Netherlands? And we pick things up a little bit. Lavreisen, is he going to go over the top? Yes, he is, and he'll take control of the sprinter's lane. And so, as it was last time, it's Lavreisen in front. But now Paul opening it up a little bit. Perhaps aborts that sprint. Up high, diving down. Lavreisen has an advantage. Paul trying to close that gap. Getting into the slipstream is one thing. Breaking it and getting around is another. I don't think he's going to do it. It's going to be Harry Lavreisen, as he's done so many times, racing for gold. Harry Lavreisen goes two for two. We will see him once again racing for gold. Paul will not be able to defend his gold medal from here last year, but he's looking for another medal. And it was just almost too big of a gap once they hit that line to get the bell. He closed up a little bit, but it takes a almost superhero effort to get around Lefreisen. We'll see the rainbows. Again, racing for gold. So, he will sit now and 
recover, perhaps watch. And I don't think it matters to him either way if this race is over in two or if the two competitors out there get that little bit more tired if it goes to a decider. But just a reminder, Jay or Chan and Fa of Suriname up 1-0. You can see it out there, Mikhail Yakovlev, the immensely talented youngster from Israel. I'll try and force the decider. Just such a height difference. You can even just see it on the bike. Yakovlev, head and shoulders taller than Jair Chan and Fa. Proudly representing the small nation of Suriname. Took up the sport in 2013. Suriname's Sportsman of the Year back in 2017. You also see him quite often in the Champions League. Jair Chan and Fa. He won from the front in heat number one. We'll see if Yakovlev tries to get into the front this time around. This has the makings of a potential track stand. I think they're moving a little too quickly for that. No time for games. It's always amazing to just see how each sprint race unfolds. Everyone different, nothing identical. The lead up to that final 250 meters unfolding differently every time. And these guys, they know each other. They've probably raced against each other several times. And so when you're familiar with each other, how do you beat them? Yakovlev going down low. This time he goes to the front. He went way down low there. And it's going to be Yakovlev. Coming around to the belt, Jair Chan and Fa, perhaps a little bit too far back. Yakovlev perhaps sprung the surprise, but Jair Chan and Fa eating it up on the backside. It's just that gap coming down. Jair Chan and Fa is going to go two for two, and he'll race for gold. Just eating up that gap on the back stretch. And Yakovlev perhaps thought that he had it sprung. And it will be the Netherlands and Suriname for gold. Not to get geopolitical or anything, but this man for the Netherlands against the man from a nation that was once a colony of the Netherlands. Just so much power in well, both those frames, but Jair Chan and Fa just left it late down the back stretch. That's when he decided to put in his shift. But a monumental task awaits him. Had some pretty good crowds here in Milton on this near side which is my commentary position. There's the start list for the men's sprint. David Eisen against Chan and Fa. Nikos Paul against Mikhail Yakovlev for bronze. But I'm on this start-finish side here. Crown there underneath. And you see the Omnium riders for the women getting ready to return. There's a look at Jennifer Valente, the American. is the tempo race coming up next. And this one will take a little bit of explaining. But we look at the results after race number one, 40 for Archibald, 38 for Paternoster, 36 for Capone. And in these three first races, the elimination next. The finish in the race determines how much, how many points you get. But the points race, the final race, the points you earn in that race count to the overall total. So, 
Capone already on the rail and their start positions are determined by how they finished in the previous race. And so Katie Archibald will get that pole position in row one right along the rail. And Letizia Paternoster will line up on inside row one. Here's a look at Archibald. You can list her achievements, but it would take a long time. So the tempo race, it's another 30 laps, another 7.5 kilometers, the difference. The leader, at the end of every single lap, will gain a point. And of course, if you gain a lap on the field, you get 20 points. If the field gets a lap on you, you lose 20 points. So, we'll see how this unfolds. There is Paternoster, there is Clark Pony. French will have some options to choose from for the Omnium position. There's Valentin Fortin, who won bronze at the European Championships for France, but it's a long and complicated way to explain the qualifying process. And so teams that qualify, nations that qualify for their team events, be it team sprint or team pursuit, they then get to essentially have a full pool of can of riders to choose from. And so they want to qualify their team so that they can pick their event specialists for something like the Omnium or the Sprint or the Kieran. And so France, if I'm not mistaken, may not have a team in for the team pursuit. And so that makes selection a bit tricky, but that all will happen after this. This, of course, is the chance to pick up some qualification points for Paris. The quota positions will be determined after this event, as this is the final international event before the Olympics. And so, if you've watched these pack races before, we await the gun. There it is. And so now, no points will be assigned for the first four laps of the race. Yeah, but after that, that's when the single points start to get handed out. And you see it so often. You saw it yesterday in the men's race where it's the American rider who launched an early attack. So that by the time that fourth lap hits, he started picking up those single points. He also picked up a lap and then lost a lap. But interesting tactics at play during this kind of neutral period where no points are given out at the moment. Nobody wanting to launch an attack just yet. It's Capone on the front. They're looking for the rainbow bands of Jennifer Valente of the United States. She's in near the back of the field. Soon be up to hearing the bell to announce that the race is off. The points are on the line. It's all bunched up. Nobody really wanting to go just yet. It's very much the washing machine effect, but now the attack goes. And it is a rider from Egypt, Ebtasan Zayed Ahmed, going on the attack and being followed the rider from Mexico, Victoria Velasco. And Hernandez of Colombia there. And so these riders might start contesting going for the single points. But uh, Zayed Ahmed happy with just the one for the moment. But now Velasco will start going for points. And it's always the wonder, are they going for the points? Are they also wanting to pick up a lap? But Look at this, look who is approaching. There is Velasco, but keep an eye on third place there. It may not surprise you, but that is Katie Archibald, absolutely bearing down on these two women in front, and there's been no response from the field. There is now, Valente is leading the chase, but so far, Archibald doesn't have any points. That's all gonna change now. She picks up the first of what could be many, and it looks like she is just carrying on and even if she gets caught by the field, she is in a position to pick up several more points. And it 
just watch it, just unless we say otherwise, it's Katie Archibald picking up the single points. She won last year's Omnium with 131 points. She's already got 40 on the board by winning the scratch. It was almost a perfect race. I think she won the first three last year. And she's on another point. The two behind her, Velasco and Hernandez. Second and third just aren't good enough. They're close, but they're not picking up any points. And so do they wait for the field or do they keep exerting themselves just in the off chance they'll pick up some points? And Archibald rides up. She's waiting for them. Now she's going to share some of the spoils as she tucks in. And in the end, the decision to press on works out well for Velasco and Hernandez because they are within sight of a potential 20 points. The field almost admitting defeat there. There's no real organization in the peloton. And it's Sevchikova of Czechia taking the very quick pulls. And I think they are going to let that trio come back. And once they reform, despite the fact that they're a lap ahead, the race for the single points will be back on again. But the catch hasn't been made already. The counterattacks are coming. It's the running from Hong Kong, China, Lee Tse Wing. Taking a quick pull. It looked like she was feigning an attack, but nothing doing. And now I think they're just waiting to get the attack made. And is will they count as the catch being made now? Not yet. So it's another single point for Archibald. She is up to six, and then she'll get 20. So she's up to 26. So Katie Archibald now can sort of sit and let the other riders battle it out. It's Maggie Coles Lister who's now jumping to the front as this is a new race for single points. And it's the first one for Maggie Coles Lister. Hernandez and Velasco also picking up the 20 points. So they jump into second and third for the moment. And now it's Anita Stenberg jumping to the front. It's a, perhaps a quartet trying to move away. Capone, Coles Lister, Stenberg, and it is Daria Pikulik of Poland, who just signed a new contract recently with Human Powered Health on the road. She's picked up a point now, so several riders on one point. It's going to be Coles Lister battling it out. Nope, it's going to be Stenberg taking this point now. And now the attack on the bottom. Jennifer Valente, Letizia Paternoster. The two rivals who were the last two in the elimination race the other night are now the two trying to break away. also the Olympic champion in the Omnium. This will be a very stacked field. Just imagine that this summer. Archibald, Valente. You can imagine a lot of Capecchi will be around for Belgium. And Italy has some options also with Elisa Balsamo. But if Letizia Paternoster puts up a good performance here, she's also fighting for a position. So just a mouth-watering proposition this summer for the women's Omnium. And it's Valente on the front. Letizia Paternoster picking up that last point. Already down to seven laps to go. Where has it gone? At the moment, it's Archibald on 26, Hernandez on 22, Velasco on 22, and then Paternoster and Stenberg and Valente now. Valente just picked that one up each with two points. But it's really fractured now. Two riders off the front. And the latest rider, that's Rakuten K Dreams, Tsuyaka Uchino. And she might just swap the points with Valente as they trade things out. It's Valente claiming another one. It is to their benefit to work together, even if it means giving up a few points. No point selfishly grabbing a bunch of points by yourself if it means you get caught. These two could be free to fly to the finish now. 
Three laps to go, they'll see it now, and it will be Uchino getting another one. That makes three for her. Her and Valente each have three, and they are coming up to potentially lap the peloton. That would be 20 for them as well. But it's two laps to go, perhaps a bit too late for them. But it's Uchino and Valente leading this one out. And we'll see if Valente does give the point to Uchino. Indeed, she will. So both of them will on, be on four. And this might be an open sprint now to see who gets the fifth point. And it's going to be Uchino and Valente bringing this one around. It's going to be Valente who will take the final sprint point. And she takes it. So Valente gets another point. But they were unable to make up a lap. So that means Jennifer Valente will finish in fourth in the tempo race. Katie Archibald going two for two, picking up 26 points. Victoria Velasco of Mexico coming in second, two riders on 22 points. So the, all, the importance of gaining those laps. Who goes to the riders from Mexico and Colombia? Quickly making the decision to get on the wheel of the great Katie Archibald. And they picked up 20 points and they finished top three here. So big shuffle coming in the standings. Only 10 riders managed to pick up points out of 24. But Archibald, two for two here in the Women's Omnium in Milton. No greatness when they see it. Confirmation there. Women's Omnium Tempo Race winner. So this would have been the place for the deciding races in the men's sprint. And there are the results. And already a 12-point lead for Katie Archibald going two for two. Paternoster still in second. Valente up to third. Lena Marcella Hernandez and Maggie Coles Lister both tied for fourth right now. But Hernandez has the tiebreaker by finishing higher in that last race. And so, since there is no need for the deciding races, it is time for the longest race on the program. That, of course, being the Men's Madison. 50 kilometers on a 250 meter track. That evens out to, doing my math, 200 laps with 20 sprints. I'll explain more in just a little bit, but needless to say, chaos will reign soon on this track in Milton. There we are, the graphic comes up. Let's look at one of the Canadians. They did a qualifier this morning to get into the Madison. There were two heats, 25 kilometer races. So half as long as this. There are the specs, 50K total, 200 laps, 20 sprint points they come every 10 laps, five, three, two, and one. The last one being double points on the line. Same rules apply if you're lapped. Minus 20 if you gain a lap on the field, plus 20. Look at our qualifiers, as I mentioned this morning. The drop a few teams, so two heats of 25K each were held to get to our 22 teams in this field. So 22 teams. 44 cyclists on this track at the same time. Yesterday in the women's race, we saw two separate crashes where teammates crashed with each other on faulty exchanges. So we'll get plenty of good looks at. Those exchanges are done via the arm sling, at least if the riders do it properly. There 
Let's have a look at the Italian side. Manilo Moro, Elia Viviani. We've seen plenty over the years and this weekend. Big difference there for that Italian side. Viviani is 35 years old. Moro is 22. internationally a silver team pursuit from the last two world championships there is great britain mark stewart and oliver wood you see the the red and black graphics and the red and black numbers that's obviously how we will pick them out i'll look at one of the canadians matthias gilmet named familiar to those who watch the Track Cycling Champions League. He's with Michael Foley. That impressive mustache. Next to one of the riders from the Netherlands. That is Jan Willem van Schip. This tall rider is about two meters tall. He raced yesterday in the men's omnium and van Schip with team with Janne Dorenbos. So they will start to form up. The leadoff men on the start finish line. And as they form up, we'll have a quick video here to better explain what will happen in Madison. As we saw, teams of two. change every few laps and every 10 laps on the sprint points the top four will gain points and in the final one at the end of the race double points 20 laps or 20 points rather for lapping the field and as those celebrating men in the rainbow bands will indicate get the most points you win the race they had the rainbow bands in that graphic Defending world champions are from the Netherlands. Jan Willem van Schip was a member of that team, but he was paired with Jori Havik. And so, since a lot of this race depends on where you can find your teammate among the chaos, there's no point one rider wearing the rainbow bands and the other wearing a normal Dutch orange jersey. And so both of them will wear the Dutch orange. Yuri Leitao, defending world champion in the Omnium, who put up a pretty solid performance to close up last night. He's back here in the Madison. And the formation lap done, the gun goes. And here we go. Let chaos reign. The teammates so start to go off. A lot of them will time their exchanges. They'll make other exchanges as well, but they will time them so that they are done with as little energy needing to be expended as possible in the sprint. They'll launch, try to launch them right into the sprint. It's Germany on the front, the defending European champions, but again, no distinctive jerseys. German European champions from Appledorn in the Netherlands were Roger Kluge and Theo Reinhardt, but here they have Benjamin Bose and Tim Torn Tutberg. So the only distinctive jerseys there are the Japanese, the Asian champions, Shunsuke Imamura and Kazushige Kuboki. And look there as Germany does the exchange. Just can 
continuing that momentum forward. And I pointed out yesterday how this kind of exchange is turning up in the most random place you can think of in the world of long track speed skating. They have a team sprint that looks identical to the team sprint from track cycling. I think they stole it. Anyway, when the, just like in the track team sprint, the skaters pull off one at a time, but now a lot of teams are implementing the second and third place skaters, or third skaters on a team, are doing an arm sling. And when I saw it, I go, well, that looks like the Madison. So it's amazing where, how sport influences other sport in the really most random ways possible. It's Czechia on the front right now. Czech side. Denny Rugovac and Jan Vonish. But now it's Belgium pushing the tempo. Two laps to go before the first sprint point. Lindsay de Wilder and Robert Geis. And big arm swing by the Belgians to launch right into the sprint. And it is Geis leading things around, but here come the Netherlands with a huge burst of pace. And it is going to be the Dutch taking the first five points. And that one was Janne Dorenbos picking up the points. 23 years old from Kastrikum, in the province of North Holland. He's a member of the under 23 European champion side in the Madison for the Netherlands back in 2022. Into the race now. It was Jan Willem van Schip as France goes to the front, but they're not terribly interested in leading things at this point. As the Germans once again just watching Czechia doing a, an exchange really in the middle of the field. And so just an incredible amount of focus and attention and bike handling skills in a race like this just to stay up. There is Great Britain near the front doing an exchange. It's Italy on the front right now with Elia Viviani taking the pull. Here's a look right there of the Danes. Just very relaxed on that exchange. Tobias Hansen and Michael Morkov. Morkov, a name you are probably accustomed to hearing on the road as well. Riding for Astana, the World Tour. 38 years old. He's worn rainbow jerseys before as well. So, a Madison Olympic Games winner is Michael Morkov from Tokyo. It's France on the front right now. Those bright orange helmets really make it easy to spot your teammate. You see a lot of teams going for the instantly recognizable helmets. side, Benjamin Thomas and Valentin Tabellion. And at the moment, it is Thomas, third in the Omnium yesterday. It's Great Britain on the front. There's a look at Portugal. Yuri Leitao, the Omnium world champion. Now the bell. And it is Great Britain leading things out. It is Oliver Wood coming around. The Danes are there, the French are there, and the Portuguese are there, but it's looking like it's going to be Great Britain just taking five points ahead of Michael Morkov. So that's two sprints down. A lot more still to go. It's all... It's all staying relatively composed right now. You can see Madison races that are just absolutely bonkers to follow. The teams are all staying relatively together right now. Confirmation of the results. Britain, Denmark, France, and Portugal picking up the 5-3, the 2, and the 1. And now it is Denmark on the front. Tobias Hansen giving way. So usually after a sprint, there's a bit of a reformation 
unless someone really wants to force the issue and perhaps go for 20 points. But right now, it's all staying it's all pretty composed. It is the Swiss going to the front. That was Valer Thiebaud. on the front, the 25-year-old from Neuchâtel in Switzerland. What was fun about Thiebo once, you can check out their training data. Of course, there are the various programs. There is the, the, the big one that all the cyclists know. But checking out Thiebo's training data when it comes to track cycling, and if you follow road cyclists, they, they show their big maps of where they go out on the roads. But Thiebo, it was just going around in circles. It's, it's just fun to see where how he shares his data. He wasn't exactly going very far, but he's going around a, a velodrome, an oval. And it's France back on the front. A couple laps to go, shaping up for the next sprint. It is Tabellion opening up a bit of a gap. It's Germany and Belgium right behind. The Swiss chasing as well and swinging into the fray is Benjamin Thomas. It is Belgium coming around the outside. Lindsay de Wilder pushing for this one. It's going to be Belgium taking the sprint. Switzerland getting up for third place. And now there are some gaps opening up, and teams may be considering pushing on. As the legs start to feel it a little bit, these sprints spread out the field more and more as the exertions have to be made. And right now it's France, just a look over the shoulder, wondering, do we go for a push? Do we go for 20, la or 20 points? But at the moment, it is seven teams off the front right now. The Canadians leading the Brits, the Portuguese, and the Dutch around. And we do, in fact, form up once again, but those teams that had to chase, they had to expend a little bit of energy. And in a race like this, we still have 166 laps to go. And those start to pile up. And then the lactic builds in, the exhaustion builds in. And that will start to really open up some gaps. The Swiss right now. It's Great Britain moving back to the front. Oliver Wood, the veteran rider, he raced in the team pursuit on Friday for Great Britain. 28 years of age is Mark's, is uh, Oliver Wood, pardon me, and from Yorkshire, another tall rider. Six feet or 1.8 meters tall. The Dutch moving back to the front. We are already down, closing into the next sprint. You can almost tell when the tempo just pushes up once again. The teams are trying to get in a good position for the sprint, and at the moment, it's the Dutch, the Brits, the Danes, the French, the Belgians, all the teams tend to see near the front getting into those right spots. And it is the Netherlands still out in front. It's a long way. Jan Willem van Schip and the Netherlands have been leading, but here comes Denmark. And once again, it's Tobias Hansen going around the outside. Maximum points for Denmark. Tobias Hansen, Denmark, Netherlands, Great Britain, and France picking up the points there. That will be a reshuffling as the Belgians who were leading get shut out. And look at that. Four teams on eight points at the moment. Great Britain has seven. And so if there is a tie, I'll remind you, if teams tie at the end of the race, 
their overall finish at the end will determine how they go. Whoever finishes higher, of course, will get that tiebreaker. Michael Morkov, when they won the Olympics in Tokyo, his teammate was Lasse Norman Hansen. Just try, trying to look to see the Morkov's riding a bike with a little flecks of gold somewhere around, because you see that sometimes where the Olympic champions get a little bit of gold adorning their bike. I do see that the Danes are riding those new Canyon track bikes that came out last fall. And just as the riders battle amongst themselves, the bike manufacturers in the never-ending struggle to gain the upper hand over the competition. And it is Team Bridgestone Cycling on the front. That's one of the trade teams. They qualified this morning. Japanese Eiya Hashimoto and Naoki Kojima. So when you watch the Nations Cup where there are always the possibility for those trade teams, and it's really Japanese sides. So just continuing that thought, uh, the Japanese sides, they tend to enter a national team and several trade teams. There's Bridgestone, there's Rakuten K Dreams, and so it really adds to their talent pool to, to pick from, particularly for an Olympic Games. And at the bell for the next sprint, it's Belgium in control ahead of Italy and Denmark. And once again, it's Denmark making a huge surge, this time up for second, and Belgium retaking that lead in first place is Robbie Geis ahead of Michael Morkov. Italy and Great Britain rounding out the points, so another reshuffling still to come here. And Belgium is pressing on. So are they trying to gain a lap? It is looking favorable for them right now, but with the field so scattered, it's going to be up to the commissaires to determine where the field is and where the lap is done. Of course, on the line, for teams that don't qualify their full endurance sides via the team pursuit, Races like this where they have to qualify individual teams. So there are also battles on the line here. We have not satisfied the ranking criteria just yet. This is the last race for Olympic qualifying points. So teams like Switzerland and Czechia, the bubble teams, are having the race amongst themselves to almost try to, to get those last points. So there are so many variables to pay attention to. It's, it's enough to make you cross-eyed. So for the moment, we're just watching the race, and it is Belgium on a flyer. And they are rapidly closing up, as now the peloton is really consolidated. It's back into a large pack. There's nobody really else breaking away. And so Belgium, we saw their amazing focus to just almost shout some words of encouragement, things to look for as Geis swung Lindsay de Vilder back in. Did a couple of quick looks over the shoulder, but then a quick few words exchange. And you can never not be in awe of the ability that these riders have. But it's looking like Belgium will make it for 20 points, but they want to save it just yet. See, they get the bell now. And so once the bell is done, they can latch back on because they're the only teams that have gotten that bell. So they will pick up five points for the sprint point and, in short order, 20 points catching the field. And fans here recognizing what they have just done. And so just like that, a quick 25 points for Belgium. And this is a race for second. You see Czechia up there with Great Britain. France getting across for a single point. 
So Czechia, potentially a big three points. Great Britain with two and one for France. There's the credit for the lap for Belgium. And they can now just kind of sit and consolidate for a little bit because they have that cushion if nobody goes to collect 20 points and it's, it's just a matter of the sprints. Belgium can just kind of sit and watch for the time being. And of course, you don't want to get too complacent. If someone launches a big attack, they'll be back around before you know it. There's the confirmation of the last sprint. Six of 20. Still a long way to go. A lot unfolding here. And we're already six laps to go. Five and a half before the next sprint point. They're really starting to just tick these laps off. Already 17 minutes into this race. And as hectic as it can be right now, it's still shaping up for the next sprint point. Top. Is this Italy sizing up an attack? It's Viviani right in front of Yuri Leitao. He was behind quite a bit heading into the points race yesterday in the Omnium, and he just kind of went for it. And he picked up a lap, he picked up some sprint points along the way, really shot up near the leader, but he didn't end up on the podium, but he fought, he fought quite valiantly, and it's really compressed now as France moves to the front for the next sprint. And on the French side, it's Tabellion leading Belgium around, and it looks like Tabellion who's gonna take five points, another three going Belgium's way. Two more for Denmark and Portugal, picking up a point. moment just updating the things uh, the standings with a hundred and twenty nine laps to go Belgium on 38 Denmark on 11 Great Britain and France following so someone's gonna have to pick up a lap if they want to gain Belgium or gain and get close to Belgium because it's gonna take a whole lot of sprint points to close up that kind of lead. Sorry, now we've updated the standings after that last sprint. Belgium on 41, France on 14, Denmark on 13. And a relative calm returns to the field. But it's never far away from chaos. And right now it's Switzerland at the front. Canada, which looks like they might be qualifying a full roster, possibly both endurance and sprints. Of course, we will finalize those results after today, but Canadians said it would be the first time that they do that. And it's an attack from Portugal. Alves off the front, and this one with five laps to go until the next sprint. This one looks like they are going for more than just five points. This one is eyeing 20. And it has the making of a successful attack because so often the ones that work well are the ones that are almost sprung on the field. And it's almost blink and you're half a lap down. And that's almost the case right now. Because once he's out of sight and the infighting resumes in the peloton, that allows the Portuguese to get back onto the back of that peloton. And he is closing in rapidly. It is Yuri Leitao. He has this Portuguese team, this duo, really in his own image because he is not afraid to attack in the Omnium. We also saw him on the attack in the Tempo race last night. So it's a, it's a hallmark of Yuri Leitao that rubs off on his teammates. And it's going to be another time going to be five for Portugal here. And they will follow that up quickly with 20. 
And so this is the race for second, and it's Great Britain, France, and side from Japan, picking up one. So five for Portugal, three for Great Britain, two for France, one for Japan, and 20 points for Portugal. So a big reshuffling is coming, and Portugal will jump up to second place. Once those 20 points get added to their standings, they will be on 27. And still Belgium nicely in front with 41. They're down to 117 laps to go, approaching the halfway mark. And so the watch for the next team to try to pull a fast one on the rest of the field. Who's going to launch an attack? The longer the race goes and the more the points gaps open up, the more those teams near the bottom of the standings might try to launch an attack, see what they can pick up, because as the race story is written, the leaders will be busy looking amongst themselves. They can't keep an eye on everybody. And so when a team near the bottom tries to go on an attack, the leaders might say, go, have fun, we'll see you soon. at the Olympic champions from Denmark, that is Tobias Hansen. As we mentioned earlier, was not part of that Olympic duo. That would be his teammate, Michael Morkov. 113, so inside two and a half laps until the next sprint point. And it's Belgium once again moving to the front. Belgium, Denmark, France, and Switzerland near the front right now. We'll get the bell this time around. Very strung out Peloton right now into the race. Robbie Geis pulling away. He is leaving Michael Morkov in his wake. And chalk up another five for Belgium. Three for Denmark, two for France, and one more for Switzerland. Now the teams that were left out of that sprint have to expend even more energy trying to catch up. Looks like they will have a reformation here. The Madison, of course, if you're wondering, named in honor of Madison Square Garden where this race was held in New York City to great fanfare in New York, a very popular spectator event once upon a time. So in French, that's why where it inherits its name, L'Américaine, the American. We start to shape up again as we count down. Six and a half laps until the halfway mark. The regular sprints are counting down. The final sprint, as always, is double points. So at the moment, there are your standings. Belgium on 46, not getting complacent, having picked up the early lap. They're always in the sprints. Portugal on 27, France on 18, Denmark on 16. Great Britain in fifth, the only other team in double digits on 13. And nobody's dropped a lap yet, so nobody 20 points down just yet. As the legs get tired and the gaps start to open up, those do start to happen, though. Buddies together, Grupo Compacto. The next attack comes. There's a look at a good Dutch exchange. See, that's the arm slings. That's the exchange we're talking about. And again, you just have to appreciate the stability and then that change of momentum. One team speeds, one teammate speeds up, and the other one who had been flying gets his slow down there. so many things to focus on in this race. And it is France off the front. A lap and a half to go until the next sprint. Denmark getting into position. Switzerland having a very good race. Picked up a couple single points, getting in position for another potentially two or more. And it's Denmark, France, Switzerland, and Japan. And now it's bunching up for the sprint. Here goes Japan trying to get around the outside. 
and it's going to be five to Denmark, three for France, two for Japan, and one more for Switzerland. Let's just get cross-eyed looking at the riders on the track and some are making the exchanges at the points line, at the start finish line where the points are given out. So if it's a lot for us watching, imagine being down there. Now it's an attack coming from the Netherlands. It is Janne Dorenbos on the attack. Nobody is responding in the field right now. They've quickly picked up a quarter of a lap. And you look for the organization, and there is none right now in the field. And it's looking like the Netherlands, if they make this jump, they're on eight points right now, and they could jump up into the silver medal position ahead of Portugal. And I think this time you won't see them going for the sprint point first, but you never know because I think they might just put the 20 in their back pocket and move on. Sometimes when you're trying to time it nicely, trying to get that sprint point, five points, and then the 20, there's the reaction in the field and you lose the 20, but get the five. But uh, you almost want to wait. And I think going up high, going down low, they are going to try to time this one, are the Netherlands. He's not fully in that sprinter's lane the whole way around. He's going to come up to two laps to go until the next sprint. As the Netherlands, look at that transition right there. And so far, it looks like they have it in hand. And they may just time this one right because they will be the first team to get the bell. And that pretty much locks them in to the five points and there they do time it well well done to them because it was about five and a half laps of drifting sort of being in that middle area where do you wait and time it and they timed it very nicely so they haven't actually been credited the 20 points yet the field is still racing for second the rest of these sprint points it's going to be another three for Belgium two for Denmark one for France What time do they credit the 20? I think that might be now. They've locked it back on. So 25 points going the way of the Netherlands. And for all the, the arm slings that we get to see, the good exchanges I spotted as the field crossed. Mexico missed the arm sling. One of the teammates held out the wrong arm, and so his teammate really just gave him a push on the back. And so it is even the experts. Don't always get it. Of course, in a race like this, it's always difficult to absolutely nail it. Nobody's going to be perfect every single time. But there's a perfect one right there from Great Britain. And so the Netherlands lap is confirmed. So those 25 points move them to 33 behind Belgium's 49. Now six points ahead of Portugal. Netherlands are 10 points ahead of Denmark as we count down halfway to the next sprint point. And we're not reading that wrong. 21 kilometers still to go. But this tempo is way up now. Great Britain and France and Denmark trying to break away, but Germany, Belgium, and Portugal are watching them. I think this might be playtime over. After so many sprints as a group, a couple teams now deciding to go out on their own instead of letting the individual teams rack up the 20 points. And so the response is having to come from the field and they are trying to catch up. It's now five teams and then it's a couple scattered teams as we go, but there is the bell to the next sprint. 
It is France there right now, and that is Valentin Tabellion leading it around. Great Britain in a great position, though, with Oliver Wood sitting on the wheel. He's got to go around the outside, but it's going to be Belgium once again, taking five points. Lindsay de Vilder getting around there, and after his effort, he swings in. His teammate, Robba Geis. Past the half an hour mark in this race. 80 laps still to go. And so the attack over for the moment. As the group reforms, a couple teams off the back, struggling to get back on. Colombia, Indonesia, the United States, Mexico, Italy, struggling a little bit now as well. There are the points, Belgium, Great Britain, France, and Denmark. But front of the pack bunching up once again that's presenting an opportunity for some of those back markers to get back on but each exertion each time they have to bury themselves a little bit they lose a little bit of that energy of course of course you try to consolidate get your legs ready for the next time the tempo ramps up Bridgestone Cycling are leading the way at the moment. So ebbs and flows in this race and so far. Each time there's the slowdown that allows all the teams to get back on. Everybody's still on the, the same lap. There are those few teams that have picked up the laps as individuals. But no team has lost 20 points now. An attack coming from Japan. And that's Shunsuke Imamura off the front. Canada was their second wheel. But they had a gap and they faced the dilemma, do we chase or do we wait? And they've decided to wait as Japan is free to fly now. Imamura, at the very least, looking like they could be odds on for five points. They already have three. So two laps to go, and it's the U.S. and Canada. Two teams both looking for their first points of the day in second and third right now. But it's going to be the bell for Japan. And Kazushige Kuboki, who was runner-up in the Omnium yesterday. Riding things around. And France back up in the race for the points. There's five for Japan right now. USA in second, France in third, Canada in fourth. And so the US and Canada, the North Americans, picking up their first points of the day. And it looks like Japan is pressing on. So they got their five and they are eyeing 20 more. up this lap and they are starting to see some back markers and so this might be a case of teams losing 20 points as opposed to Japan gaining 20 points but Japan is closing in and so were that to happen Japan would jump up into the medal positions so then that would cause another big reshuffling and weaving around, riders not in the race. This again is where you have to pay attention. Not every rider in your way is in the middle of the race. So Japan agonizingly close, tantalizingly close to another 20. And it looks like they have credited it now. And so Japan now into the bronze medal position. champions doing that continental champions jersey proud getting right up onto the back of the field 20 points in the bank there you have it gaining a lap and just in time for another sprint so i imagine they won't be taking part in this one and it's portugal off on a flyer and it is belgium aware of the situation they 
do not want the Portuguese to get right up in the mix. So Portugal in position to take five points, but Belgium right hot on their heels. And it is looking like Belgium in the slipstream. It's going to be a two-up sprint for maximum points. It's going to be Portugal taking it. And then Belgium getting three. Bridgestone is on the board with two, and the Netherlands pick up another single point. And so it's very condensed. Look at those standings. Race for silver, two points separating the Dutch and the Portuguese. Japan, 28 points. France on 26, Denmark on 24. Belgium marking this race very, very well. And so they did come in second in the sprint, but they only lose two points. And so they have a 23 point advantage. So they are picking up points as they go. As a look at that sprint, Belgium more than happy to just say, you take the five, you're only gaining two points on us. I think that was just a hopeful flick of the elbow. I don't think Belgium had any plans of taking a pole, but now this race has exploded once again. It's the Netherlands off on the attack, and this is one that Belgium really has to watch. Bridgestone cycling. Denmark are leading the pursuit of the Dutch. Suddenly, if they pick up another lap, well, it's game on for gold. This, what this is doing is shedding a bunch of teams, and so we might start seeing teams losing 20 points. And Bridgestone and Denmark have caught the Netherlands, and so there is a group reforming here. Switzerland also in the mix. Belgium has made it back on. The French and the Brits are also there. And so this is something of an elite group as they start to catch some back markers. Colombia, the US, Indonesia. And this is also an opportunity for an attack. And you have other teams with riders in the way. You can find an opening and it is Denmark. This is opportunistic by them. A lap and a half to go until the next sprint. And they will get the bell, and they have the opening. And so, despite going a lap down, I think Indonesia and the U.S. may be in the mix for this sprint, depending on how they kind of reform it there. But it is Denmark who are in line for a big, big five points. So they get it. We'll see who gets the second. It's his task of the commissaires to figure that out. It's Portugal picking up three. The confirmation, the U.S., Indonesia, and Colombia have all dropped 20 points. But of course, when you're in, when you're a team that loses a lap, you're essentially back included in the sprint. So points are once again possible for those teams in the sprint. But they did lose 20, which is a blow. And now it is Denmark. They are pressing on. Portugal leading the chase. Denmark, Belgium, or pardon me, Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, France, and Great Britain are pursuing. So six teams in pursuit of one. The rest of those points from that last sprint, Switzerland got two and the Netherlands got one. So at the moment, Belgium still with a comfortable lead on 57. It is a tie for silver between the Netherlands and Portugal, both on 35. Denmark and Japan on 29 and 28, respectively. And in sixth, the French on 26. And still with several sprint points still to come and the bonus sprint points on the line. Who is going to win is anyone's guess, but it is looking odds on that Belgium are on the day. A lot more can happen. It looks like Germany and Canada are now caught. Italy has also lost 20 points for losing a lap. Everybody's taking a collective breath there as, again, as the group starts to bunch up again. Denmark pleased with this last bit of work they've done, picking up five points. But before you could really draw breath, the Swiss are not happy with the pace and say, well, we're launching something now. And confirmation, Germany and Canada each losing 20 points. 
They are now in with that lead group. So they are eligible for the sprints points despite losing 20 points, but they are now well down in the standings. And it's Portugal going again. Surprise, surprise. Alves launching the attack. You could almost always expect the Portuguese here to be one of the protagonists, a mover and a shaker, an animator. And Yuri Leitao. Looks like he is picking up those five points. Belgium with three, Denmark with two, and France with one. So Portugal now alone in second, 20 points down on Belgium. And Belgium getting wise to the situation, leading the chase because of course, if Portugal now gains a lap on Belgium, it's tied. Belgium smartly managing this one. They are comfortable with losing a point here and a point there. Because they still have the wide margin. What they do not want to do is lose another lap. And so they're just managing this. And I believe I missed a crash. The Canadians went down. And it is Michael Foley. He rides for a continental team based out of Canada on the road anyway. So Matthias Gilmet, his teammate, is in the race. And so the perk of the Madison is that you still have a rider in the field, but until Foley is ready to resume, it's going to be a lot of riding by Matthias Gilmet. So the calm before the storm once again before another sprint with 35 laps to go. And Foley able to continue. A pretty decent day for Switzerland, often in the point scoring positions, but they are just two points ahead of Czechia for some of these teams. Olympic qualification is still at stake. And it is now the Swiss. Denmark, Great Britain all responding to it pretty well. And we are inside two laps until the sprint point, 32 laps to go as we approach 45 minutes of racing. There is the bell. It is France leading around Benjamin Thomas. Denmark right behind him as Michael Morkov swings into the race just in time to pick up the sprint. And that might just be enough for another five for Denmark. France with three, Great Britain with two, and Germany looking like they are in for a single point. And so that five points for Denmark moves them to 36 now into the bronze medal position at the expense of the Netherlands. Each time there is a sprint and the Belgians' lead remains 20 points, the less likely it is that a team will pick up a lap, so even with the double points on the line, Belgium would be in a very comfortable position. Belgium were fifth at the European Championships. That had Lindsay de Builder and Fabio van den Bosch. Podium is Germany, the Netherlands, and New Zealand. Germany does not have Roger Kluge or Theo Reinhardt here. And New Zealand did not send a team for this event, and so the Netherlands, the only returning podium side, really with a shot of repeating that feat. Germany down in 12th at the moment. And so Two more normal sprints to go, and then the big one for double points. And it's France, Great Britain, Denmark, Portugal, all there. All the teams near the top of the leaderboard, and that's going to be a point where the Netherlands, in fourth on 35 points, I think now have to start eyeing 
not just point scoring positions, but winning these sprints. They want to jump into the podium conversation. And Tabellion coming in to the race once again. But surprise, surprise, it's Portugal animating it once again. They are not giving up, but Belgium alert to it again. So this is how you win Madison races. Not only are you the most unified team, but you have to be alert to the teams around you. So Portugal potentially on pace for another five points. But now Belgium just goes right over the top, and now Belgium's in the place to pick up maximum points. They would have been more than happy to only lose two points of their lead to Portugal, but now they get full points. Belgium. Portugal, Denmark, and France. Your top four on that sprint. So Belgium adding two points to their advantage. The standings now, Belgium 65, Portugal 43, Denmark on 38, France on, or Netherlands rather, on 35, and France on 31. So one more normal sprint to come, and then it's double points. And the top two teams on the leaderboard are pressing on. And the Netherlands. Now knowing they need some points, are trying to catch on. They're trying to bridge. Japan, Bridgestone Cycling also trying to chase. Bridgestone Cycling in 10th on just two points right now. But it is Japan closing up, just as the Dutch close up on Belgium and Portugal. And we'll see if they just let the field catch them up or if this group will try to push on. Looks like the deficits are coming down. Portugal, Belgium, and the Netherlands at the moment, the leading trio. As they're catching the back markers, the US and Colombia. Japan losing touch. They're waiting for the second group from the looks of things to try to chase back on. They're still pushing, actually. And it might be successful for them as Great Britain and France also being dragged back into the mix. Netherlands at the front right now. Five points for them would be a big shot in the arm, especially if Denmark can get left out of the points. And so the U.S. getting caught. Another 20 going down. Colombia also losing 20. And you guessed it. As we come up to the bell, it is Portugal leading the surge. The Netherlands coming around. Yuri Leitao, now he swings in his teammate Alves. But it's the Netherlands with a twist in the tail. Janne Dorenbos to take five for the Dutch. Three to Portugal, two to Belgium. And it was Bridgestone picking up a single point, their third. They're the last team not to have lost a lap. They're in 10th. And the shuffling of the leaderboard again. The Dutch up into third as Denmark gets shut out of the points in that sprint. So it's Belgium on 67. They are looking like the victors here in Milton. Portugal, the Netherlands, and Denmark. Denmark now finding themselves in a position off the podium. So, counting down not only to the end of the race, but the double points, which could lead to one more reshuffling of the leaderboard. There's really no let up still. These teams are pushing all the way to the line. No slowing up, no easing of the tension. It's just all go now. And it's Great Britain, currently in seventh on 18 points. Even 10 won't do it for them. Switzerland following them, currently in eighth on six points. What might an effort today do for their Olympic qualification hopes? There is Italy and Indonesia being lapped again. Down to four. 
correct sell. Belgium letting the other teams duke it out. They know they're on the same lap. We can just about close the book on their victory so long as they don't drop a lap late. It's Denmark, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Great Britain upping the tempo now with two to go. And they will come around and get the bell. And we can just about say now that Belgium will carry the victory. It is Denmark leading the chase for 10 points. The Netherlands, Switzerland, and Great Britain. Count out Japan or Portugal, the final sprint coming around. Denmark and the Netherlands, this is a race for the bronze medal. It's Netherlands taking it. And that will be enough to get them bronze. Actually bump them up into the silver medal position. Just ahead of Portugal, they did not get any points on that final sprint. It was Great Britain and Switzerland in a photo for third and fourth. But look at our victors, Belgium, picking up that lap early and then being alert the rest of the way, contesting sprints, watching for breakaways. Belgium, victorious in Milton. Look at Portugal, so much work. Really a powder keg of excitement in this race, but just nipped at the end for silver. They'll have to settle for bronze. Denmark tried. They picked up six points on that last sprint, but Denmark on 44 points. Just two points off of the podium. Janne Durenbos and Jan Willem van Schip, silver medal for the Netherlands. And that's the Madison, over 50 minutes of racing. The average speed over 58 kilometers an hour. this race, Belgium picking up that lap early on and then being involved in contesting many, many sprints, marshalling this race just about to perfection. Belgium winning the Madison here in Milton. That expression on the American rider's face says it all. That is a long and tiring race. Bronze medalists from Portugal. Are you a gravel bike amateur? You can win one of the two VIP passes for Paris to Ancaster taking place. And they will exit on that far side of the track. Just waiting to tabulate. You see on the bottom of the screen, just waiting for the official results. Commissaires just confirming the results. any denying that it was the Belgians' day in the men's Madison. And as that goes on, the sprinters are back on. Nice work by the Dutch to go for that final sprint on double points, enough to vault them up. That's one sweaty victory photo. Belgians. And with that one crash to the Canadian, they are also just on the far side, checking the consistency of the track. Because the wood surface, of course, can splinter a little bit. There are the results. Belgium, 67. Netherlands in silver on 50 points. Portugal on 46, just off the podium. Two points short. Denmark, the Olympic champions, on 44. France rounding out the top five on 31 points. So they are 
He's laying some tape down just to cover up any splinters that may pop up. Of course, it's not something you want going into a tire. And the sprinters back on. Nicholas Paul, Mikhail Yakovlev ready to go. They're waiting on the apron down on the bottom, just waiting to be let out. And then the gold medal race. Best two of three, Harry Lavreisen of the Netherlands. And Jair Chan and Fa of Suriname. And good luck again handicapping this race for the Olympics with the likes of Matthew Richardson and some of the Japanese riders like Kaya Ota. Matthew Glatzer, the other Aussie. So it'll be a tough, tough race to predict. There is a race for bronze now. Yakovlev did earlier, officially confirmed, and able to race for Israel at the Olympics in Paris. And Nicholas Paul, whose reign here in Milton as the champion, coming to an end, but a chance for him for bronze. It is Yakovlev leading things out. man like Nicholas Paul Yakovlev's frame just huge just towers there Paul made it interesting with Harry Levreisen both of these riders though going down in two races slowing things down. This one is a very fast sprint. It's lap and a half to go and already they are dropping the hammer. It's Nicholas Paul with an advantage. Yakovlev may have been surprised a little bit there. That is a big, big gap. Yakovlev is closing a little bit, but it is just not enough. Paul is going to take race one. 73 kilometers an hour over that last just less than a lap on one gear, of course. And now both of these men have to slow down. That takes a while. So kudos to Nicholas Paul jumping the gun, perhaps getting Mikhail Yakovlev a little bit on the back foot. Just too much work to do inside of a lap. We see now the races for gold. A look at the two men. Harry Lavreisen adorned in rainbows. And what a story. Jair Chan and Fa could be from Suriname later on this summer. Talked about how only two medals in the country's Olympic history. In any sport, in any Olympics, both of the previous two medals in the Olympics for Suriname coming in swimming. So if he's able to pull something off, that's how national heroes are made. You see him in interviews. Seems to be quite the easygoing guy. But this is a look of focus. Lavreisen opting no gloves. Right there. Jair Chan and Fa with gloves. The whistle goes. And this one. Quite a bit different from the bronze medal race. That one, they moved around quite quickly. This one, the games are afoot. But 
must be running through Jay and Sean and Fa's head knowing that this is the era of Harry Lefreisen. Virtually impossible to beat. No track stand there this time on the back stretch. Briefly flirting with that prospect, but it doesn't come to be. Now they both are right down on the blue band, which of course is permitted right now. Lafreisen, eyes over the shoulder. Jayer Chan and Fa was one of the faster qualifiers, and he goes to the front. Lafreisen letting him go a little bit, but now he comes. The Predator stalking Jay or Chan and Fa. There is a good little gap. Let's see what happens on the backstretch. And just look at this. Harry Levison closing up, but is it too little, too late? Jay or Chan and Fa trying to hold on to save a race, but no, it's Harry Levison going up 1 0. Timing it to perfection was the world champion for the briefest of moments. Jair Chan and Fa may have allowed himself to think that this was possible. That's not a smile. And it was so close around the corner just when it mattered most. Harry Lavreisen takes the race. And they will have their break before coming back up for the decisive races and it's the Omnium's time to return for the elimination. The women's elimination was on Friday. So if you were there watching us, you know how this all works. There is the woman who will start at the front. She's two for two. She's Katie Archibald. 21 Omnium World Champion. She was fourth in the Omnium at her home in Glasgow. That was part of that gold medal team pursuit side. So the riders are filing up as you look at the start lists right now. A look at the Canadian Maggie Coles Lister who rides for Roland. She said she's off to California after this one. I don't think it's to race. Look at the standings right now. Two for two, Katie Archibald, 80 points, Letizia Paternoster in a second, 68, and Jennifer Valente, the world champion. Stocking, moving up the ladders. Ready to make a big move here in the elimination. It was Paternoster winning the elimination on Friday. Actually, she won originally. She crossed the line, but she was relegated. And so although it was actually Valente who won the elimination. And the relegation happened when there were only two racers left. And so Paternoster was knocked down from first to second, picked up a silver medal. And it was Anita Stenberg from Norway claiming bronze in the elimination on Friday. Not everyone in a position just yet, but if you have not joined us and have perhaps stumbled onto track cycling for the first time, the elimination is just that. The riders will go off, the gun will go, will be underway, and then the first time around the bell will ring and every two laps, the last rider over the line is eliminated until, of course, we're down to the two. So this is the race where we don't watch the front. We'll make notes of what's going on at the front, but that's not where the action is. The action is at the back. There is Paternoster. Rainbows and a star-spangled helmet for Jennifer Valente. originally from 
San Diego. Started racing on the track in San Diego when she was 13. Picked up national junior championships when she just, quote, tagged along with friends. Imagine just showing up and becoming a national junior champion. She switched to endurance riding, though, after moving to Colorado. But anyway, that's the brief history of Jennifer Valente. There's a lot after that, a lot of races won, as you can see. And the elimination is underway with this. There we go. So they are off. The next time around, the bell will go. And then the elimination will real well and truly be underway. And we watch what's going on at the back. And it is Jessica Roberts. That's Team Inspire. But you always kind of want to watch what's going on at the inside of the track because that's where someone can get caught up. But no, it's going to be Tashkent City Cycling Club. Margarita Missurina is the first to go. Tashkent, of course, the capital of Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan has the national team and the Tashkent City Cycling Club here. And that is the first to go. 23rd place for her. And we watch what's going on at the back. It is, looks like it's a rider from Mexico who's in trouble and that is in fact the case. Victoria Velasco is the next to go. A minute 15 into this. We are down two riders already. And this time, potentially in danger from Colombia is Hernandez, who picked up a solid result in the last race the tempo thanks to the 20 points game but looking at the bottom nope she survives and it is Liu Jiali of China the next to go now living dangerously at the back Amber Joseph of Barbados she is really losing contact now Valente also back there. What are you doing back there? She's able to get up and around. Amber Joseph is putting a push. This is taking a lot of energy, but I don't think she has anything left, although she might dive down to the bottom. Nope, not gonna happen. Amber Joseph next to go. So, down to 19. Li Che Wing of Hong Kong, China. Off the back there at the moment. She's making a move. Is our rider from Colombia at risk here. And that's how it's going to go. Mendez is out. Hernandez. After moving up the standings a little bit there with the solid results in the previous race, not going to be so good in 19th this time. And already on another elimination lap, Li Tse Wing. Hong Kong, China in trouble. And she may have just done enough to survive. That one might be a photo. And it is Jessica Roberts with that. The Union Jack, and I like that design. She is, of course, from Great Britain, but it is the, the trade team. Team Inspire. So they altered the flag a little bit. It's a nice touch. Anyway, down to 17. And again, right from Hong Kong, China is in trouble. But look who's in trouble again. We've said her name so many times. But is she playing with fire? Anita Stenberg just surviving. It is Daniela Campos of Portugal next to go and talking about it on Friday. Anita Stenberg 
Likes the thrill, it seems, of being near the back, and she is an expert of getting herself out of danger. And it was very close that time. And now she's not really risking anything. It looks like she will be safe this time. It's the Canadian, Maggie Coles Lister, who's dangerously near the back, and as she boxed in, and it's at the bottom, it's Jasmine Lichty. So Jasmine Lichty got caught up there. And you watch the bottom of the track. There's that opening right there. It naturally forms. And it's often a desperate rider trying to find a position who sneaks in. But when you tuck in on the bottom, you can get boxed in. And riders on the outside move around. And with nowhere to go, that's where the danger happens. And so it's almost this deceptive ocean of calm. That's close for the next one to go. And it is Tsuyaka Uchino of Rakuten K Dreams, the next to go. And we're down to 14. Litse Wing, credit to her. She's been in danger a number of times. She's been able to survive, but the legs are certainly starting to feel it right now. And look who she's chasing the European champion, Anita Stenberg. And Lee taking that inside line. And she has nowhere to go this time, but she might have survived again. Has she survived again? She has. It is Ebtisam Zayed Ahmed of Egypt who got caught at the bottom there with nowhere to go. And Lee survives again. And it's the same twosome. Anita Stenberg, Litsia Wing, uh, Mizuki Ikeda of Japan, the latest in danger. And what are her options? I don't think she has any. And she will call it a day well, for this race. It's Ikeda, the next to go. Earlier on, after she was caught near the back, the Canadian Maggie Kozlister made a burst to the front, and now she's drifting back again. And it is the same two riders, copy and paste. Anita Stenberg and Lietze Wing. But also entering the fray now, Jennifer Valente. And so the wearers of the distinctive jerseys are potentially in trouble. And it is Stenberg. Luck ran out early on this one. And so Anita Stenberg, the European champion, is out. Bronze in the elimination the other day, 12th in this iteration of the elimination. And it is Lee again at the back, right in front of her. That's Katie Archibald. Well, this is interesting. But Archibald, so much tactical mouse. Getting right up there, and it could be Leia Lynn Tutenberg penned in at the bottom. And it is. And so, just watching that woman in the, let's say, seafoam green kit, Lietze Wing, an inspired performance, staving off elimination every two laps. Always in the back of your mind, how much is left? But I'm sure she'll get mad respect from Anita Stenberg, a woman after her own heart. And Lee is going to survive again. It's Petra Sevchikova, who is the next to go. And Sevchikova will Settle for 10th, and we're down to nine. Well, just checking in at the front, it's Daria Pikulik at the front and Emily de Dierksen, Poland and Denmark, respectively. And you know, I think the lights have gone out for Lee Tse Wing. Indeed, they have. And so a valiant effort for her to get into the top 10 in the elimination, but just too many efforts needed to keep surviving. And the fans appreciate that effort. And so many of the heads of state 
have survived to this point. Archibald still there, Capone's still there, Valente's still there, Mike Evanderdown, Alicia Paternoster. And keeping an eye on who's in danger now. It's Paternoster at the back, but she does have that outside line, and it looks like Mike Evanderdown of the Netherlands is the next to go. So much happening, we've only been 10 minutes. There's just so much happening in this race. We are nearing the end here. Seven riders left. Another elimination to come right now. It's Jennifer Valente at the back, but we know she will move. And that leaves the Canadian Maggie Coles Lister with work to do. She'll, she's going around the outside. It's a long way to go, and I don't think she has anything left. Is she going to survive? Is Capone at the bottom going to be missed out? And I think it is. And it is Clara Capone. That inside line again. She just had nowhere to go. And so we're down to six, but those are some big efforts from the likes of Maggie Coles Lister. And one has to wonder just how much is left. There is no rest for the wicked in this race. Another elimination is coming. And this time around, Coles Lister jumping around with Valente. Emily de Dierksen of Denmark doesn't have much in the way of going. It is going to be de Dierksen going now. Right now at the front, Katie Archibald. Almost seeing who can stay with her. The points race is still to come, so the effort has to be measured. It is Pikulik going to the bottom of the track. And she is leading things around at the back right now. It's Coles Lister again, but she has to get around the world champion. Jennifer Valente looking over her shoulder. And that will be it for the Canadian. She made it close. Alicia Paternoster was in sight. It's a fifth for Coles Lister. Down to four. And once again, Katie Archibald, she went three for three in the first three races in Omnium last year. How good is she? But Pikulik moves on the inside at the front. Valente coming around. That might be it for Paternoster. Indeed, that is the case. Three remain. Three pretty big names, I might add. And at this point, it's whoever has the most left. Who, ha who can handle one more stretch, one more exertion. It's Valente on the back right now. And she goes around Pikulik may be in danger. It's two big riders to get around in Pikulik. Daria Pikulik saying, that's it for me. And what a final pair remaining. Jennifer Valente v. Katie Archibald. Two women who have won Omnium gold medals before at World Championships. And I think Valente is all done. Katie Archibald will get a victory lap, and she will go three for three. There are no more superlatives to describe this cyclist. A smile, a fist pump, and another win. Great effort from Jennifer Valente. We will finish in second place and keep shooting up the standings. But that woman is in unbeatable form. So there will be a little more of a reshuffling of the standings, but the top will remain the same.
might we be heading to another victory interview for the podium with Katie Archibald. It's looking like it. And the updated standings, 120, a perfect 120. Valente and Paternoster on 102. Canada's Maggie Coles Lister in fourth, 10 points behind second place. And so as we can see, as we have seen so many times, a whole lot changes with so many points in the points race on the line. And so one thing is for sure though, it's a very comfortable margin for Archibald and the sprinters have returned. Yakov left there again. And Nicholas Paul trying to finish this one quickly. Patting the heart, but a face immovable like stone. Just looking forward. Just a little glance sideways. The issue with the reflective visors that really do look cool. You can't have to stare down eye to eye, pushing off the line. And Paul pulled his, perhaps jumped, cutting Yakovlev off guard in the first one as they came around to the bell. It was already an insurmountable margin. So we'll see what Yakovlev drew up on the drawing board this time. These two, no danger of a track stand this time. Pretty similar to last time. They moved around that first lap at a brisk pace. Yakovlev, much closer this time. He is being alert to the move, and Paul, again, opening it up early. The man with the 200-meter world record. Now he opens it up. Yakovlev, much, much closer this time, able to get into that slipstream. Yakovlev breaks the slipstream, trying to make a move on the run, but there is just too much power right now, and it is going to be Nicholas Paul for bronze. Paul goes two for two. Just too much blunt force power from that man. And he takes his plots. Nicholas Paul, he won gold here last year. Bronze but this time around. Now his next task, figuring out how to get ahead of Harry Lavraisen, just like everybody else in the world, trying to figure that out. He was runner up to Lavraisen at the Worlds. And he's certainly looking in good form. And we'll see if Jair Chan and Fa has figured something out in the last few minutes. Man who's been just about unbeatable at a world championships the last few years. Many have tried, few have succeeded. Chon and Fa was close though in race number one. Had a good little gap. Lavraisen timing his effort to absolute perfection though. And just getting the decisive few centimeters Coming into the line. That man looking to add more Palmeiras to his sterling resume. And Jair Chan and Fa 
hoping to write his own story. He's been around a few years. 30 year old. He actually raced at the first event of this track, or what it was open for, the 2015 Pan American Games, did J.R. Chan and Fa. Ninth in the sprint that year, sixth in the Kieran. We're actually approaching 10 years since this velodrome has opened. And it has been a welcoming home for Nations Cup the last several years. One. Again, a much more cagey affair. Lavraisen trying for the sprint treble. Member of that team sprint side a few nights ago with Roy Vandenberg and Jeffrey Hochland. And then part of the 1 2 Dutch effort yesterday. Lavraisen and Hochland. Trying to make it three for three. Saw Roy Vandenberg walking around in jeans today. His work was done on Friday night, but just so much power on that Dutch side. Now Lovreisen dives down. Very close there, almost a collision between the two, and it's Lovreisen in front. Jair Chan and Fa trying to go around the outside. He's going up high, trying to dive down, get every last little bit of speed he can. Chan and Fa, here he goes around the outside. Lavraisen holding them off. Lavraisen, another gold medal is coming his way. Mary Lavraisen holding off the world once again. And winning again and again and again, but savoring it every single time. A really, really good effort from Jay or Chan and Fa. And Lebreisen acknowledged that, always love to see the camaraderie and the sportsmanship in this event. This was the move. It was very close. Chan and Fa tried to defend a little bit, but I think he knew if he really cut in front, that was living dangerously. Lebreisen just took the moment and just held him off. The man who could push thousands of watts doing it again. And we stay in the sprints. No deciders needed for the medals in the sprints, but there's a look at the results. Lavraisen, John and Fa, and Paul, one, two, and three. Mateusz Rurik in fifth. He was runner up last year in the sprint, and Jakob Lev in fourth. So we stay with the sprints, but this, of course, now is the Kieran returning. And all the way down, all these riders went this morning with the qualifiers. They did the 200 meter flying lap. And so that is it for men's sprinting. And it's the women's Kieran now, the seventh to 12th race. And the lineup, Kelsey Mitchell of Canada, Wang Li Juan of China, Taki Marie Divine Kwame of France. <laughs> Alessa Katrina Propster of Germany, Miriam Vecce of Italy, and Nurul Iza Izati Mod Asri, here she is, of Malaysia. A lot of that Malaysian side, some of that Malaysian side is doing a training camp in Melbourne, Australia. Fun story about Alessa Katrina Propster. The name Katrina. When I saw that name last year, I said, that looks a lot like the Canadian speed skater Katrina LeMay Doan. Sure enough, through the course of research, I found that her father was a big speed skating fan. And Alessa's second name, Katrina, is named in honor of the Canadian speed skater Katrina LeMay Doan. And that German side. Propster trying to get in the mix for the German side. There are the likes of Emma Hinza, Lea Friedrich, not here. And the Durney's around, and the race is away. It's medium Vecce on the front right now. The 
gentleman from Crema in the Lombardy region of Spain, Lombardia, 27 years old. Under 23 sprint champion in 2018 is Vecce. We've seen her in the Champions League as well. It is Kwame of France following behind her. And it is Propster, who's moved ahead of the Canadian Kelsey Mitchell, perhaps riding off into the sunset after these Olympics. I mentioned earlier there was a social media post. She was relishing the moment, racing at home. And the Olympic sprint champion saying, not sure if how long, many more chances you'll get that to happen. There's so many great sprinters these days. And the journey's off. And this is the race that's perhaps a little more freeing. Not for the medals. A whole lot of pride on the line. And it is three abreast with Kwame going to the front. Vecce, Propster, Wang, Mitchell, and Mud Asri now. They will come up to the bell. It is still Kwame in front. Vecce coming over the right shoulder. Propster's right there. Medium Vecce trying to go back to the front. Here comes Kelsey Mitchell around the outside. The Canadian wanting to finish on a high. She is going all the way around. It's Mitchell and Vecce. It's going to be Mitchell taking it. And in her wake, Maud Asri of Malaysia. And Vecce third in this race and ninth overall. Kelsey Mitchell, who did not have a great individual sprint yesterday, finishing off with a victory for seventh place in the women's Kieran. So you have to wonder where riders are in their Olympic preparation. Mitchell did really take part in the Nations Cup this season. So maybe flying under the radar a little bit is the, as weird as it is to say, for the defending Olympic champion in the women's sprint. She has not, she won here last year. But there's nothing quite like the Olympics to bring out the best in someone. We'll see. There's the result. Or there's the start list now for the gold medal race. Lorianne Genet, Martha Bayona, Mathilde Gros, Hedy Van de Waal, Steffi Van der Pate, and Alessa Andrews. So, gold and silver from the last world championships in Glasgow are here. Wow also competed in the finals, as did Mathieu de Gros. So a lot of riders who competed in Glasgow for the medals are here. Lorianne Genet, the Canadian. Martha Bayona of Colombia. There is the world champion, Alas Andrews of New Zealand. Really the only Kiwi representative here this weekend. And one of two Dutch riders, Hedy van der Waal. Really looking to notice the differences between the two Dutch cyclists. If you get a look, Hedy van der Waal's hair matching just about that Oranje Dutch kit. Gro, the winner of the sprint yesterday, and Steffi van der Paint. And there is Martha Bayona. Silver, as I mentioned, from the World Championships. a year ago in the Kieran silver medal as well. That was to Alyssa Katrina Propster of Germany. The journey is coming around. So, so many accomplished riders here. Everyone lining up. 
to their lineup position or starting line positions for that first lap. Dirty picking up speed as it goes. Bayona. Is leading things around. Van de Pate, Cro, Van de Waal, Andrews, and Eugenet. side looking for something to cheer for. They had some medals on the first night, shut out last night. This really represents their best chance, at least until we see the final race of the Omnium with Maggie Coles Lister just hanging off the podium. Final lap before the Derny, three and a half laps to go. Some separation and now Andrews deciding to move up from fifth. Globe just looking over the shoulder. Now the tempo ramps up. The Derny's off already. The race is away. Andrews. And it is the two Dutch riders right behind her. Bayona in fourth on the front now. That one is Hedy Van de Waal leading the way. Bayona now with a surge from fourth place coming up to the bell. It is still Hedy Van de Waal. Aless Andrews now coming. Here comes Lorianne Genet from sixth. She gets around Mathilde Glo. It is the same tactic she tried in the last race. It is a push coming four abreast there, but it is still Aless Andrews leading the way. Aless Andrews, it's going to be Aless Andrews taking it. Steffi van der Pate, Silver, and Lorianne Genet getting up for bronze. So there is something for the home side to cheer for. Les Andrews from New Zealand doing the Rainbow Bands proud. Almost identical tactic from Genet, pushing it late. And this was the move by Andrews. She had Van de Waal ahead of her. And at one point down the final turn, four abreast there. Mathilde Glo not really involved in it. And it was Vanderpate coming up behind Andrews and then the late push by Genet to get up there for bronze. Andrews, silver yesterday in the sprint, gold today in the Kieran. Church, Les Andrews. Here are the results: Andrews, Vanderpate, and Genet. The podium: Van der Waal, Bayona, and Gro. Where were the runners in the final? And the other riders from the morning, Kieran races. They did not advance to this evening. And oh right, we're coming up to our first podium of the day. It's for the men's Madison. And it's Steve Fleck down on the floor with the team from Belgium. I am with uh, the winners of uh, the men's Madison race at the Tissot UCI Track Nations Cup, Rabi Gais and Lindsay De Wilder. Rabi, I'll start with you. You were matched up against some very strong teams, the Netherlands, Great Britain, Portugal, and Denmark. How did you do it? How did you win? We had a good uh, game plan today, and uh, some days uh, just right works out. And uh, today the plan worked out, and we were both really strong. So I think uh, Lindsay was one of the fastest guys on the track today, and it was a really a pleasure to ride with him. Lindsay, where did you know you had uh, the race uh, completely wrapped up and uh, victory in the bag, so to speak? Yeah, I think the last uh, 40 laps we had uh, 20, lap, uh, 20 points advantage. And then, uh, yeah, I felt still strong, so I know we just had to follow uh, the second team. And then I know, yeah, it would be kind of hard for uh, these guys to beat us because we just had uh, to follow and uh, to ride defensive. So that was the moment I know we, we will win, yeah. 
Robbie, with the, uh, the Olympics to come and this strong finish here at Milton, uh, any thoughts on uh, the possibility of a great performance at the Olympic Games this summer in Paris? Yeah, and not only this performance, it doesn't say anything at all, but uh, it's good for the trust in each other. And uh, I had some bad events before this, so it's really like uh, a step up for the morale to uh, Paris. So I'm really happy that we can uh, end our uh, path to, uh, to Paris with a win. Congratulations and best wishes in Paris this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robbie Gates and Madison Madison winners. Nancy the Builder, Robbie Geis. And they mentioned it was the it was important that they picked up that lap early and then did not let up. They did not get complacent. They followed the sprints. They took advantage of, of taking sprint points as well. And kudos to them. Geis mentioned the, the game plan. And it was executed perfectly. And this event, he mentioned he's had some bad results, and so what might a win here do for the, the confidence? Because these guys will not be back together. No more international events anyway until this summer in Paris. And so it is the first medal presentation of the day. Almost snuck up on me here. So after this, we would have had the deciding races for the men's sprint. Those aren't happening. So really just one race to go, and it's the women's points race. And so for one of the final times this weekend here in the Milton. The medals and gifts will be presented by the, medals the mayor of Milton, and the bags His of Worship, coffee. Gordon Kranz. Les médailles et cadeaux seront présentés par le maire de Milton, Monsieur Gordon Kranz. In third place, representing and the Portuguese. Really good animators of this race. They took every chance they could get to try to launch an attack. Almost in the mold of Yuri Leitao, because we've seen how often he likes to go on the attack. So in the end, they were just nipped at the end with the Dutch taking that last sprint for 10 points, but they managed to hang on for the bronze medal. And there are the coffee bags for them. At this point, I don't think those will be gone by the end of the weekend now. That will probably survive in the flight place, home. See, he's assessing. How long is it going to take for me to get through this? Place, We're stereotyping, but cyclists like their coffee. Jan Willem van Schip and the Dutch Jan side. Dorenbos. Jan Dorenbos and Jan Willem van Schip. That's a big lean down for the tall Jan Willem van Schip. Dorenbos, it's Dutch side. Also lots to choose from. It was Jori Havik with Jan Willem van Schip at the European Championships. So selections is always going to be interesting for some of these really deep sides. There are the two Belgians you heard from them. De Wilder has really been the mainstay. They did come in fifth at the Europeans. That was in the Netherlands. He was teamed up with Fabio van den Bosch. So, Again, another one of those sides with the deep pools. And for these countries where cycling is a huge deal, the decisions will be scrutinized. And if they don't go their way in Paris, they will be analyzed and perhaps criticized. One more time. Let's hear for your medalists. On applaudit vos médailles. There is the podium. What might it look like later on this summer? Looking back, you know, we have to look at the in the inclusion of the likes of New Zealand with Aaron Gate and Campbell Stewart. The Brits, of course, will always be there. The French put up a good set. So, just track cycling is going to be so fun to watch this summer with so many good riders and teams in so many different events. The victory photo. For the pair from Belgium. All right, folks, so we've uh, got a little case. bit of a pause before our final race of the 2024 Tissot UCI Track Nations Cup here in Milton. Hope you guys are having One a great time One more race out there. to come.
having a pretty great time up so here. Uh, we've been calling the action for three days the straight. <laughs> so it's uh, been some long, they're but They're starting very to make their way back up to the track, but we're, we're so grateful to have the opportunity a bit of a photo bomb there by Belgium also. on the Portuguese side, enjoying uh, the bronze medal. The riders making their way back up onto the track. At this point in time, there was a qualifier, and there have been three races, and so the legs will certainly be feeling it right now. And I believe I wondered the same thing at this time last year. Will Katie Archibald try to take maximum points in this race as well? Go for five in every sprint, go for 10 at the end, and complete a perfect Omnium, it'll be tough, and honestly, I doubt it. But she's gone three for three so far. So they will start to form up, and it will be Archibald getting that usual spot, pole position along the railing. And there is a gap behind her for a second, but it's very, very close after that. If someone goes on a flyer, if someone gets 20 points, well, that just throws this race into complete chaos then, doesn't it? There is Daria Pikulik, really moved up the leaderboard with the bronze, or the third place in the elimination. She is the defending champion here, is Katie Archibald. Mike Vanderdoon of the Netherlands. the standings. Archibald with an 18-point cushion ahead of Valente and Paternoster. And they are then 10 points ahead of Maggie Cole's Lister. So of course, there are, of course, those riders chasing Paris qualification as well. The spots will be determined after this weekend. And so there are so many little races inside this race, which already contains so many little races. And so races upon races upon races. Letizia Paternoster has had a pretty good weekend so far in a medal position here. He's on the podium on Friday. And here we go. So, similar kind of situation to the other pack races. One form up lap. There will be a gun fired and then we'll be away. And 80 laps, sprint points every 10 laps. And then we will have a double points sprint on the line. And then at these points do count towards the overall standing. So there's not like a block points assigned at the end. It's all points gained here count to the standing. So you see that graphic that will be updated on the fly as we go. And so, of course, if you gain a lap, you gain 20 points. You lose a lap to the field, you lose 20 points. Amber Joseph of Barbados is a DNS in this one, so we are down to 22 riders in this race. And it's the early 
body feeling out stage, of course, at this point in time. There's some very tired legs after a long day and long weekend of riding. Some of these riders, of course, did Madisons. They did eliminations. They uh, will earn their rest. Of course, some name. Most of all, these riders will be on a plane somewhere with very tired legs. Archibald on the front right now. She's in a position to just kind of watch. And she only has to really at this point pay attention to a couple of riders being Valente and Paternoster because even if anyone, Maggie Cole's Lister down, gains a lap, they'll still have plenty of work to do to ca watch Katie Archibald. So right now, Archibald is shoulder to shoulder right near Jennifer Valente and Paternoster is behind both of them. And so again, this might be one of those times where the lower ranked cyclists may try to jump off the front, try to pick up 20 points, move themselves up the standings a little bit to look for a high finish and go for some, some points. There is Paternoster in the Azuri kit, right behind Leolin Tutenberg of Germany. And now it's Valente and Archibald, one and two on the front. And literally, as Valente pulls off, Archibald is right in her slipstream. We know who she's watching right now. And we are coming up to two laps before the first sprint. And it is... Suyaka Uchino of Rakuten K Dreams who crossed the line in front, but nobody's wanting to go just yet. And here we go, it's Valente leading things out. Maggie Cole's Lister gets wise to that. Micah Vendedon also there. And it might be an opportunity here for Valente to pick up some points. I'm looking for Archibald and she is well down the field. And so an early five points coming to Jennifer Valente. Maggie Coles Lister in second, Vander, Vanderdown in third, and Daria Pikulik in fourth. And so that closes the gap a little bit. It's still 13 points. But hey, anytime Valente picks up five points and Katie Archibald picks up zero, I'm sure Valente will be very happy with that. And Coles Lister closing in on the bronze medal position. She picked up three points, and Letizia Paternoster picked up none. And now an attack going. And the rider, it's Daniela Campos of Portugal and Margarita Missuriona, Missurina, pardon me, of the Tashkent Cycling Club. So Missurina is 22nd on three points. Campos in 20th on 28 points. And so, not a threat to the leaders right now. Mizuki Ikeda of Japan being followed by compatriot Tsuyaka Uchino. So it's really a battle right now for some of the back markers, but Pikulik and Paternoster are upping the tempo. And again, Archibald and Valente and Coles Lister all near the back there as Paternoster goes up high. Look back at that first sprint. Comfortable for Valente, getting in a good position. And there's our front two. Going up to five laps before the next sprint. There are the results confirmed. Valente, Coles Lister, Vanderdoon, and Pikulik. And it looks like the front two are closing in on a lap. They also will, of course, try to time it to get the five points as well at the sprint. Three points until the next lap. They, the way that peloton is going, they are not moving very quickly at all. And so I think they are going to snatch the 20 points right now. Indeed, that is the case. And the race is on now for sprint points. Suddenly, it's a race for five. But it's Missy Arena who goes right back to the front. It's 
an interesting prospect. A lap and a half until the next sprint. Archibald, Paternoster, Valente, all right there. It's being led out by Victoria Velasco of Mexico. And this might be the one where the Canadian misses out. It's Velasco ahead of Paternoster, Archibald trying to come around right now. And it is Paternos just going to take a full five ahead of Velasco, Pikulik, and Archibald. And so Paternoster tying it up with Valente once again on 107 points. And they are now 12 points ahead of fourth place. Archibald picking up just the one, but she still has a 14 point advantage. Now the reshuffling continues once again after each sprint. Nobody really wanting to risk it just yet. 58 laps to go. We're still waiting for that other shoe to drop. Is there someone who's going to throw caution to the wind, take a chance, go on a flyer, try to pick up 20 points? Someone that is, of course, closer to the top of the leaderboards. We have seen it so far already. Two riders, Campos and Missy Arena, getting 20, but that only moved them up to Campos is in 15th on 48 points. Missy Arena in 21st now on 23 points. It's Archibald on the front. And as I say that, it's not Archibald on the front. It's interesting second. The two riders tied for second and the rider in fourth, all very close to each other right now. As we come up to 55 laps to go, it's really the chess match right now. I don't think they meant to be on the attack right now, but they are a little bit off the front. Emily de Dierksen there from Denmark, and now the catch is made, and Leolin Tutenberg leading a charge. Tutenberg in 16th now on 42 points, and it's three riders who, again, will not trouble the top of the leaderboard. Archibald is perfectly comfortable letting them go because they would sweep up all the points, meaning her rivals couldn't get any closer to her because right now it's four riders off the front. And if they survive until the next sprint, all the points would be off the table for the top of the leaderboard. Chase is on, the catch may be made here. Indeed it is, so two laps before the next sprint and we'll see who tries to counter. Paternoster is near the front, Pikulik is there. And Clara Caponi of France is leading a bit of the peloton. And they will come up to get the bell. And it's Velasco leading things around. Pikulik in fifth place. Really the one near the leaderboard who's going for the points here, and that's enough for her with five points. Victoria Pikulik, or Daria Pikulik, pardon me, moves into fourth place at the expense of the Canadian Maggie Coles Lister who was shut out. Victoria Velasco gets three, Mizuki Ikeda two, and Letizia Paternoster gets one, and so that one point moves Paternoster to alone in second place. And at this point, we may start to see some riders lose contact, losing laps as they get strung out. There's a look at the sprint again, nicely timed by Pikulik to get the full five points. And she's now nine points off the podium. And an attack by Sevchikova, Petra Sevchikova of Czechia. Anita Stenberg watching her. The European champions in 12th on 60 points. And now it's one of the Portuguese rider, Daniela Campos. She's already picked up one lap. She's going for another one. And if she does, as things stand right now, she would move up into eighth place but it's, uh, it looks like the field is responding to this one. 
something about this Portuguese side. They love to go on the attack. Love to see them animate it. And yeah, she, she rides up Campos. So giving up the ghost on this one. And it's Archibald still glued to Valente's wheel. However, it's not Valente who's in second right now. It's Letizia Paternoster. And the detente once again in the field. Everyone catching their breath a little bit. Who will be brave enough to launch the next attack? Again, if you're looking for 20 points, you almost want to surprise the field. Jump them, get a straightaway, try to get out of sight as quickly as possible. Because once you get out of sight, the infighting amid the field resumes, and you can just kind of keep pushing away. And it's Valente on the bottom. She's picking it up. That's not a full on attack. It's Stenberg. Now at the front, Maggie's Cole, Maggie Cole's Lister rather in second. Cole's Lister parents used to run a bike store, so perhaps it's fitting that she gets into the sport from Maple Ridge, BC, which is just outside of Vancouver. The parents also organize a, a little stage race in the area. And the bell, and it's Archibald leading things around, and it's going to be Katie Archibald picking up full points. Suyaka so Uchino of Rakuten K Dreams getting three, Anita Stenberg going two, and Letizia Paternoster getting another one point. And so, updated standings Archibald 126, Paternoster 109, Valente 107, Pikalik 98, and Maggie Cole's Lister 95. Last year in winning the Omnium. Archibald picked up 131 points, so potentially on pace to beat that, depending on how the race goes, but it's Clara Capone of France now going full bore to launch the attack. She's sitting in eighth on 65 points. Jessica Roberts down in 20th, trying to bridge up. We'll see if they can get together to start team pursuing their way around to try to pick up 20 points. Coming down to 36 laps to go for these two. And the bridge is made. And so these two riders now. Temporary allies. Let's see what would happen if Clara Capone is able to get 20. She would jump up into sixth place. And leading the charge is the current sixth place rider, Emily de Dierksen. And she's not really pushing. There's not a ton of organization in this field. So each moment. There's no organization in that peloton. The advantage goes to those two riders on the front. But now the counterattack happens and it's sort of fracturing the field and it's a lot of the, the riders lower down in the standings. And again, this is potentially taking points off the table from those chasing Katie Archibald or even just chasing a medal position. So they will come up to three laps to go, and it's looking very good at least to get five points for Jessica Roberts and Clara Capone. So they have two laps to go. That main group is coming back together. It still is strung out. And it's about a half a lap for those front two to close things up, and you would think that after the sprint for the points, the pack would start to look around and bunch up again. So again, that would help the breakaway. So there is the bell for the front two and for the field. And so it's Jessica Roberts and Clara Capone. It's going to be Roberts picking up five. Capone's picking up three. And they've sort of decided not to contest the sprint, opting to work together for 20 points. And then it's going to be, oh, there's Pickley jumping up to get another single point. Hernandez, Lena Hernandez picking up two. 
second. So Pikulik now four points ahead of Coles Lister in fourth place. And the advantage for the two leaders on the breakaway is just kind of locked at half a lap. But now they're adding to it as the main peloton looks around at each other for another moment. And Katie Archibald pushes briefly. And these two riders, it's starting to hurt when you're on your own for this long. And so I doubt they'll last for the next sprint point. They'll opt likely to try to go for those 20 points. Counter attack coming. And it is Tsuyaka Uchino, Rakuten K Dreams, and Daria Pikulik, who's been very animated in this race. Jumping up, she's jumped up to fourth. She's only eight points back of Jennifer Valente in the bronze medal position. And it is Valente recognizing the situation. Letizia Paternoster also watching. And now the gap is coming down on our front too. It is visibly slower. It is pain personified at the front right now. It's very strung out. Archibald leading the main field. Master class of managing this race and Here's an opportunity. As the front two come back, Pikulik, Paternoster, and Valente are watching each other. And Maggie Coles Lister of Canada now is jumping up and bridging to this lead group. And so it's all to play for if she can somehow manage to get five points. And Emily Dedirksen carrying on through, going off solo. She will come up to see 22 points. I think at least that mid-pack four will get caught, and it will be Dedirksen on her own to contest the sprint, and there is the, the catch of the field. So Coles Lister tried to sneak away a little bit, but the current podium recognized that and came back. And so bell for Emily Dedirksen. So she will get five, and now she's looking on course. There is a crash, two riders down. It is, I see Stenberg, and I see Daniela Campos. And so the European champion is down. But five points going the way of Dedirksen. Katie Archibald leading the sprint for second. And it is Paternoster getting third, and I think Pikulik up for another single point. And so Paternoster inching away from Jennifer Valente. But to Dierksen, it didn't really look like she was going full bore to carry this on solo. She just rode on through and found herself off the front. And Campos has a, a tear of the kit on her shoulder. Seems to be fine. Her and Stenberg both getting back in the race. So two sprints to go. This is a look at that collision. And Campos just very close to another wheel, goes down. Stenberg, not much she can do there, but it was at relatively slow speed. They weren't flying. So obviously hope that everyone's okay. There's the other look at it. But they're both able to continue. And it was right down at the bottom, so they didn't fall down and slide down that banking too much anyway. So where are we? Here we are, Dedirksen still in front. And it is Mizuki Ikeda of Japan leading the chase. And riders from Mexico, Velasco and Hernandez of Colombia in the lead at the moment. Of course, Velasco and Hernandez caught on with Katie Archibald earlier in the tempo race and that Move them up the standings a little bit. Both of them fell back in the elimination. But they, at the moment, are taking up those four sprint point positions. Four laps to go until the next sprint, and then we have the double sprint point. Just the two riders picking up the lap on that whole race, and that was Daniela Campos and Margarita Missuri Missurina. In the end, that doesn't really trouble the leaders, but 
just the one lap and might get Van Dudun attacking the field now. And it looks like these four could pick up both the lap and the sprint point. And I think they're just going to get the lap as they're going to close up really quickly here. And De Dierksen stands to benefit the most from this. She will move up to 97 points. And it would move her ahead into fifth place at the expense of Maggie Coles Lister. There's the catch. And there is the bell. Coles Lister on the front right now, riding up on the top of the track. And De Dierksen and Ikeda just continuing on through. And I'm not sure if the field knows that this sprint is four full points. Ikeda gets a five. And De Dierksen gets three. Coles Lister getting two. If I'm not mistaken. So De Dierksen, Hernandez, Ikeda, and Velasco getting the 20 points for gaining the lap. De Dierksen now up into fifth. Hernandez and Velasco now up into seventh and eighth, respectively. And so at the moment, your updated standings, you see there Katie Archibald leading the way. It looks like Micah Vanderdown also gaining a lap. Right from the Netherlands, up to seventh on 92 points. So Archibald still leading the way, 129. Letizia Paternoster on 111. Jennifer Valente on 107. Daria Pikulik on 100 points. And here goes Micah Vanderdown again. And Tsuyaka Uchino recognizing that and jumping with her. There's the points. Ikeda, De Dierksen, Hernandez, and Velasco of that last sprint. Uchino currently sitting in 11th on 63 points at the front. The runner from China, that is Liu Jiali making the bridge. Liu is on 35 points in 18th place. So four laps to go. This is for double points. And none of the leaders really troubled by the two off the front. And other riders racing for position are currently leading the group. And so I think we can safely say it. Katie Archibald winning the Omnium. Of course, she has to get to the finish line, so nothing is over until it's over. But looking good, we'll say. And it is Uchino leading the way. Liu chasing her, and it's Emily Dierksen on the front right now. Two laps to go. The Odyssey is almost over. The Omnium started with a qualifier this morning and three other events just before this one. The bell for Tsuyaka Uchino and Liu Jiali, and leading things around, leaving nothing to chance. The champion elect here in Milton, Katie Archibald, Clara Caponi, Daria Pikulik behind her, and it's going to be Uchino taking 10 points, Liu taking second, and then it's Pikulik just ahead of Archibald. So Pikulik gets four points, Archibald another two, and wouldn't you know it, Katie Archibald for the second year in a row not only wins the Omnium, but wins it with exactly 131 points. Second place goes to Letizia Paternoster of Italy on 111. Jennifer Valente of the US in third. We just saw a look at Daria Pikulik. Good effort from her coming up to 104 and finishing in fourth place. But Archibald does it again. A good weekend from Letizia Paternoster. Silver in the Omnium, silver in the elimination. And she really can't believe it. Might there be some selection quandaries coming for Italy? Elisa Balsamo, who actually was runner-up last year. 
to Archibald. <laughs> What's amazing is Archibald on 131 for the second year in a row. Last year's runner-up was Elisa Balsamo from Italy. She had 110 points. Patronoster finished with 111 points. And for the second year in a row, Jennifer Valente with the bronze medal. Valente last year, 108. This year, 107. It's almost symmetrical. We can know, as I said, for Paternoster. Canadian Air Maggie's Cole's Lister in sixth. And she was riding with Ebtisam Zayed Ahmed of Egypt, who finished in 16th on 48 points. I think she's ready for Paris. And she's certainly making a case for inclusion in Paris. It's interesting, two days ago, Paternoster had the ecstasy of victory and it turned when she was relegated and was crestfallen. Today, silver medal is very, very sweet for her. So I almost don't want to say it, but that's the last race of the day. We still have some medal presentations still to come, so obviously don't go anywhere. We're going to hear what uh, some of these riders think about where they are as we count down to Paris. The average speed in that women's Omnium points race, 48.29 kilometers an hour. Just a shade under 25 minutes. And they have all earned their rest. And Omnium is not for the faint of heart, just like any track race, really. A certain special breed of person to race these. like Steve Fleck is down on the floor talking to Aless Andrews. We'll see if we can join it in just a moment. Women's Kieran, another one of them. Just every single race. I'm, I'm just sounding like a broken record. Just about every race has such a deep field that almost anyone on their day, if there's one race that there is a prohibitive favorite, it's it would be in men's sprints events where, I mean, Harry Levreisen and that Dutch team sprint side are going to take some beating. But there is a look at the results. Katie Archibald in the Omnium winning for the second year in a row here in Milton. Letizia Paternoster, silver. Jennifer Valente coming in at third. And then all the way down. We'll know who has the qualifying positions after this event as various quota spots will be officially assigned. A lot of riders already knew coming in that they were pretty much secured, but it's the last ditch scramble for those later positions. And it is the women's Kieran. We just heard from Alessa Andrews down there. In third place, representing Canada, en troisième place, représentant le Canada, the defending bronze medalist from the Olympics in the Kieran, Lorianne Genet. Jumping back up onto the podium. I think it's her first time in quite a while. Getting it, not bad to do it at home. And might she be peaking one final time, just in time for an Olympics in Paris. In second place, representing the Netherlands, 
En deuxième place, représentant les Pays-Bas, Steffi Vanderpeet. Steffi Vanderpeet, second time on the podium this weekend. They were winners in the team sprint on Friday night. So again, just like on the, the men's side, and the Dutch place, are so deep in the New women's Zealand sprint, heading into a while, also place, an option. And not a big Kiwi team sent here to Milton, but she comes away with two medals this weekend, did Alas Andrews, gold here in Kieran, silver in the individual sprint. One more time, let's hear it for our medalists. Encore une en fois, on applaudit vos médaillés. Emma Hinze, Lea Friedrich uh, of Germany. And uh, women's sprint coming up in just a few months. And women's Kieran. Oh my. So that's the first of a few medals to be given out. And we're going to throw it down to the floor for another interview. Stand by. I am with uh, Elise Andrews, the winner of the Women's Kieran at the 2024 TSO UCI Track Nations Cup. Elise Andrews, also the, win the bronze medal in the, uh, the, the Kieran. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's a long way to travel for a couple of uh, podium places, but was it worth it? Yes, it's a long way to travel, but it's better than going to Europe, so I'm very happy and um, yeah, super happy with the outcome as well. What are the plans for Paris this summer? Um, I'm heading home tomorrow, uh, yeah, tomorrow and just getting some really solid training for, for three months. Um, head over to Europe in July and then just, yeah, over to Paris then. Congratulations, Elise Andrews, your Kieran Women's Champion here at the 2024 TSO UCI Track Nations Cup. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. The next medal ceremony we're going to have here is for the men's sprint. And it's a name we've said so many times this weekend, Harry Leverison. And we'll throw it down to the floor. Steve Fleck once again with Harry Leverison. Harry Leverison, three races, three wins, the team sprint, the Kieran, and just now the sprint. How does it feel? It uh, feels really good to, uh, to have such a good weekend. Um, today I had a lot of sprint deeds, but uh, really happy how it went. And uh, started with a really quick time this morning. And uh, yeah, went with the flow and uh, kept going uh, really good. What is your number one goal this year in 2024? Uh, Olympic gold. In Paris this summer, how will it feel to have that Olympic gold medal around your neck in one of these three events, maybe even all three? Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I hope I can go for a gold medal and uh, I'll have to see and I think uh, it will, if, if I uh, get, to, get to get one, it will uh, feel amazing. Harry Lavrisen, congratulations on your success here in Milton and good luck in Paris this summer. Thank you. So much humility from him. He wins just about everything this weekend and still, yeah, it would be nice to win one. He's, uh, modest in his own abilities, but uh, there's nobody in the world who seems to be able to beat him. Welcome to the award ceremony for the 2024 TSO UCI Track Nations Cup London Men's Sprint. Il y a eu la cérémonie de remise des prix de la coordination TSO UCI Milton 2024. As did Nicholas Paul of Trinidad. It was Paul in the semis. Jair Chon and Fa in the final. Both of them tried. Neither of them could snatch a victory off Harry Lovelace. There is the podium. The medals and gifts will be presented by Matthew Jeffries, Chief Executive Officer of Cycling Canada. The medaille is a very accomplished rider. One thing is missing from his resume is an Olympic medal. He's knocked out in the quarterfinals in Tokyo in 2021. But since then, he's got Commonwealth Games medals, Pan American Games medals, World Championship medals. The world record holder in the 200 meters, 25 years old. Might this finally be the time for him? It's 
second yeah. place representing Suriname. Silver medalist put up one of the faster qualifying times, showing his legs were in good form today. Knocked off Mikhail Yakovlev in the semis, and that first race was close against Harry Lovrais, three one hundredths of a second a difference, but wasn't able to do it. Got a silver medal today for Jay Urchon and Fa. Copy and paste all the other sprint races this weekend. Harry Lavraisen, golden again. I know the Aussies will be back in the summer. Japanese riders as well, Malaysian riders as well. And so the rest of the world will try to reload Try to pull one over a man that has so far been almost unbeatable on the big stage. Still one more medal ceremony to come, and it's another woman. A rider who we've heard from plenty this weekend who just keeps winning. So he has three bags of coffee this weekend. I wonder if he shares with the rest of the team a well caffeinated bunch. Couple more Dutch medals on the pile. Four gold medals this weekend. Three of them belong to him. And Nicholas Paul, just looking down at the end. Nicholas Paul and Jared Chanted Fun getting some pictures. Their staff members down there. They have the same. They have the same pen. All the riders' teams have pens, and Jared Chon and Fa and Nicholas Campbell or Nicholas Paul, pardon me, are in the same pen. So very familiar with each other. Of course, they race Pan American races against each other. One more medal presentation to come. There's the champion once again defending her Omnium title here. She has been corralled for the interview, and it's almost like watching her progress down because we're going to hear from her again for the final time this weekend. But I would imagine not the final time in her career. So as they set up this final podium of the weekend, Katie Archibald is down on the floor there. She's now joined our Steve Fleck, and let's hear from the Omnium winner. I'm with uh, Katie Archibald, uh, winner of uh, the Omnium, also the winner of the Team Pursuit uh, and the Madison uh, with uh, her partner, Nia Evans. Uh, that's a lot of riding in three days. Katie, how are the legs feeling? Um, yeah, everything's feeling pretty sore now, but apart from my head, which is, uh, yeah, tuned up to happiness. What's, uh, what's more important to you, the individual win in a race like the Omnium or winning with uh, teammates uh, in the Madison or the team pursuit? I can tell you what, what feels best is winning with teammates, but I think the, the package of the, the three Olympic events, team pursuit, Madison, Omnium, that's, that's our team ambition. Um, and so this is part of that. And I'm, I'm basically I'm teammates with my coach on Omnium Day. Um, you're never alone. And uh, yeah, it's, it's both a reassurance before the race, you don't get as nervous, and then a, a nice celebration afterwards that we, we, we win together, we lose together, and um, yeah, today it's a win. You talked in a previous interview about how special it was to race here in Milton. What, uh, what do these three victories mean for you in Milton? 
Yeah, it means I think I know how to, to ride this track. Um, I've really front-loaded the Omnium, taking advantage of the, the speed of the track in those first few events. Suffered my way through the points race um, to, to hold on to it in the end. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what you have to do. Congratulations, Katie, and good luck this summer at uh, the Paris Olympic Games. Thank you. I think by now Steve must be on a first-name basis with Katie Archibald. They've had chats every single day that we have been here in Milton for the TSO UCI Track Nations Cup. And another victory. And might she be aiming bigger things in Paris this summer? Of course she is. She's aiming high. That's what these athletes do. And all the opponents in every one of these events will make sure they are at their best as well. Two of these other riders were also on the podium this weekend in the elimination race. Jennifer Valente. Letizia Paternoster beaming from ear to ear. She has had a memorable weekend, certainly. In third place, representing the United States, on troisième place, representant les États-Unis, Jennifer Valente. Yes, Valente getting her medal and souvenir. In second place, representing Italy, on troisième place, representant l'Italie, Leticia Pasternoster. Two silver medals this weekend, responsible for two thirds of Italy's medals. Italy coming away with three silver medals in all. And then on the weekend for Katie Archibald, Great Britain with five golds. And first she place, is representing a Great team Britain member or individually Olympia responsible. Three herself. Of course, she did say that in the Omnium, she has her teammate as her coach as her teammate. So it'll be a very successful weekend for the Brits. A dress rehearsal for them. That's how they were treating this weekend. The last time this weekend we see a podium in Milton. And it's only fitting that it's a woman who's only been on the top of the podium here, Katie Archibald, followed by Letizia Paternoster and the world champion, Jennifer Valente. Very satisfied with the British team. Brits, certainly happy with the weekend. There is the overall Omnium Nations Cup results. Katie Archibald leading the way. Suyaka Uchino from Rakuten K-Dreams second and Yumi Kajihara of Japan in third. Kajihara, of course, not here this weekend. And so her being included in the mix, Lara Gillespie of Ireland. That Omnium's gonna be fun. Overall. Nations Cup results as Great Britain just padding their lead this time. With their results here, Japan jumps into second place. Germany, Italy, and Canada rounding out the top five in the overall Nations Cup. That's, of course, the culmination of the three events from Adelaide, Australia, Hong Kong, China, and here in Milton in southern Ontario, just outside Toronto. Their 24th didn't send a team this weekend, but all these teams assessing their own programs, deciding what to race for and when to put in a training block instead. As I mentioned, the Brits saw this as a dress rehearsal for Paris. And if a dress rehearsal is a taste of things to come, I think they will be certainly pleased with the outcome. All the way down 
Same as one of those trade teams mixed in, not doing all the events. And from this weekend, the medal standings, as I mentioned, Great Britain, five gold, one silver, two bronze. Pretty solid dress rehearsal. The Netherlands, seven medals, almost matching the total, almost matching the gold medal total. Four and three, and all the way down there. Canadians picking up a few medals. The French picking up a few medals. The Belgians all the way down to Nicholas Paul's bronze medal there in the sprint. And so as we close the book on another Nations Cup season, it's taken us to different spots around the world. Now the countdown begins. Paris awaits. That's the next time these riders will get back together. On behalf of the entire team here in Milton, I'm Gavin Day. Goodbye.